If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what's your terrifying, bone-chilling encounter with the paranormal and unexplained events? Mimics, demons, paranormal beings, etc. I recently went on a hike with my daughter on a little trail that is part of the Cherokee National Forest in Tennessee. As we hiked, I got a feeling of malice and death in the area. This sounds crazy, and I usually don't believe in paranormal things, but I felt like bad things had happened near our location, and the memories of those atrocities were still attached to the ground. I didn't say anything and tried to shake it off. Unprompted, my daughter said. Dad, can we turn around? I feel scared for some reason, and I don't know why. We turned around, and the feeling subsided. When I got home, I spent some time trying to research the history of that particular area, and I couldn't find anything specific. The only information available was that a certain tribe related to the Cherokees was moved off the land and relocated somewhere out west by the US government in the 1800s. It was spooky, though. I went moose hunting north of my grandparents' place on this one trail. I quieted a ways in and stopped and sent out some texts, but I got the feeling I should get the hell out of there, didn't trust my gut, and kept going. I kept running into issues, getting whipped in the face by trees, and it seemed like all the trees were broken over the trail. I made it through and got to a swampy area, where I got my quad stuck. I had to walk out in the dark. During the moose rut, they don't give a shit. They crash through trees and call during the night. They sound like monsters. I walked out and got picked up by my uncle. The next day, I got the quad out with access to a different trail. The next day, I went to my grandparents' place, and my grandfather told me to go up the trail I had previously left their place on and tell him what I had seen. I went, and there were two birch trees bent over the trail in an arch, they were braided together. No one goes back there but us. We have no clue what it means. My grandfather has had an interest in Bigfoot since then. This happened when I was a teenager. I was sleeping in my room with my cat. The door was closed, and it was dark. I woke up and saw this shadow at the foot of my bed. It was huge, about 8 feet tall, and vaguely the shape of a man. It was the darkest thing I'd ever seen, and it just seemed evil. I lay there staring at it, too terrified to move or make a sound, when, all of a sudden, it collapsed into a pile of black dust and shot under my bed. I'm prone to night terrors, so hallucinations at night aren't unusual for me. But what was unusual was my cat, who normally doesn't react because I'm the only one who can see the hallucinations. But this time she looked right at it, ran to the door, and furiously began crying and scratching at the door, trying to get out. This is only one of many paranormal stories that I have, but it freaks me out the most. I have a big old military chest at the end of my bed, it's solid metal, etc. And one night I wake up to go get some water, and I get the feeling I'm being watched. So I turn over and look to the end of my bed, and there, standing in the middle of the chest, is what appears to be a 6 feet 6 inches tall shadow person just standing there watching me. I couldn't see through it, as the darkness it gave off was so deep. And it felt curious, like it was confused that I was there. I decided to just go back to sleep as I didn't want to disturb it, but I later told some family members, and my brother spoke up, saying he's seen it about five or six times just loitering in his room. And from where he pointed it out in his room, it was a straight shot through a wall to mine. We still have no idea what it is, but we call it Bob now and watch out for it nightly. I had a very, very odd experience about 17 years ago. I was driving to a friend's house. It's important to say that if I worked one mile from my friend's house, I'd drive the same way to get to both places, I'd just drive farther to get to my friend's house. So I'm driving, and I get to a red light. I'm taking a left, to get to work, I'd drive straight, and I'm waiting at the light. A car identical to mine, a brown Jeep Grand Cherokee, pulls up next to me and stops at the light. I looked at the driver and swore the driver was me. I saw myself driving my own Jeep, wearing clothes that I would only wear to work, usually on a Friday, and driving towards my job. I've only told three or four people this story. Two of them believed me and told me they also had very weird stuff happen at that intersection. My friend and I were driving on a road parallel to the Trans-Canada Highway, surrounded by farms. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning, a clear summer night with lots of moonlight, when we realized this thing was in the middle of the road. I say this because I have no idea what it could be. Neither of us noticed it on the road, we thought it was dirt because it wasn't moving. When we got maybe 6 feet away, we saw a shadow and realized something was there. It appeared to be a couple feet tall, sitting on its hind legs, and had large ears that I can only describe as very similar to bad ears. It was covered in short golden blonde, like a golden retriever, hair and had a stubby snout, and the most unnerving part was the giant black, non-reflective eyes. 
my friend slammed on the brakes, and that thing ran into the long grass in the ditch beside the road. Neither of us had an explanation. We continued driving and went around a corner. This is where things get really weird. About 30 seconds later, we see a pair of headlights come around the corner. My friend is a car buff and likes to guess vehicles, so we were looking at the headlights fairly closely. We noticed there were no yellow or red lights, just headlights. We were driving for about a minute when, I swear I'm not lying, the lights moved vertical on top of each other, then moved back to the regular headlight position. They did that two more times, then disappeared. We stopped at a stop sign and confirmed we saw the same thing. Being logical people, plus being a first aid attendant and mechanic, we doubled back to see if someone went off the road or if we could have seen a reflection or something, anything to explain what just happened. Nothing, everything was dark, and everything was how it should be. There were no traces of movement, light, or anything. We booked it home after that. My family had a house built along with two other families on an extremely old farm in Situate, Ma. All three families experienced the same paranormal stuff, and no one told each other for a couple years. It was three new houses in the back and the original farmhouse up front. In the five years I lived there, three families lived in the farmhouse because no one could stand it. It was called Sam Tilden Farm, and it was built on old Native American lands a very long time ago. They closed it down after Sam killed himself. I guess there were a number of tragedies on the farm, and Sam may have drank himself into insanity. When it came to the farmhouse, there were a bunch of issues that kept families from staying. The barn light had to stay on at dusk, or stuff would happen. Like out of a movie, pictures falling off walls, glass breaking, door slamming. The one story I remember was that the barn light died while they were away. When they got back, all the pictures in a hallway fell down at once. It seems a little far-fetched, but these people didn't even last a year. At the new houses, you could hear a tapping from the attics. It was really loud, and it sounded like someone tapping their foot. I forget who figured it out, but someone decided to yell, Sam. Stop tapping. And it would stop. Sometimes you would hear what sounded like large animals running up and down the stairs, but it would be faster than a large animal would be able to run. They'd go up, down, up, down, up, down. A few people said they heard what sounded like 20 brooms all falling and hitting the hardwood at once. Female voices and singing from the garages. The girl in the middle house asked why my sister was out in the front yard in the middle of the night in a white nightgown, but we kind of think she was full of shit, but who knows. There was a bunch of SHT that I don't really recall. Now that I'm thinking about it, there was a Tilden tombstone inside the barn for some reason. I'm not sure if that's just normal. I guess the Tildens were among the first settlers in the area. I live in a small town in California, off the coast. I was about 19 when this happened. I lived with my family, mom, dad, brother, and sister, in a two-bedroom apartment on the second level, it is a two-story apartment building. My sister and I shared a room. I woke up about four in the morning to a humming sound. I thought how odd that was. I was lying on my side and decided to turn to the other side, and what I saw, briefly, scared the poo out of me. I had two tall white figures in my room. One was near my sister's bed, and the other was in the middle of the room. It turned to look in my direction. I was so terrified that I threw my blankets over my face. The next thing I knew, it started pressing its hand down on my stomach. The kicker for me was that I couldn't move when I felt it. Somehow, I willed myself to start moving because I had this dread that if I didn't, something would happen to me. I was able to move my body and make a noise. After a bit, I started to get sleepy, and I thought, no. I got the courage to cover my head, and they were gone. The humming noise was not. I forced myself to stay awake until my mom got up at 530. I don't know what happened. Call it sleep paralysis, or call them visitors. It never happened again. I live in the middle of 10 bucks. But duck nowhere on the border of Michigan and Indiana. Nothing but trees and farmlands. We have coyotes, and at least once a year I hear about someone seeing a cougar. We have a lot of drug addicts around my town as well, maybe it was one of them. But I just heard the loudest howling sound I've ever heard, and I've lived here my whole life with multiple coyote run-ins, a couple cougar sightings, and too many meth head encounters to count on both hands. I have never heard something this loud before. It sounded like a deep animal howl, but it was so loud that it felt like it was right outside my window. I did look, I didn't see anything in my yard, not like a cougar or a coyote. Not like a meth head screaming or howling. But like a stop breathing, it shivers down your spine. Howl. It scared the SHT out of me. I nearly fell off the couch from the sheer loudness of this howl. It's raining, and I'm in my living room. 
the neighbor's yard lights just turned on. When I first heard it, I just kind of waited. It felt like something I didn't actually hear. But it happened three times in total. Each howl made me tense up and my heart race. I felt like I couldn't move. After the third one, I finally grabbed my phone to try and catch the sound. But I missed it. It's been 10 minutes of waiting for another howl. I was waiting for that feeling of anxiety to follow. But it hasn't happened. All I've managed to hear and see is the rain. I'm just still caught up in that feeling I got from hearing the howls. I feel like I just realized something bigger than me was hiding in the trees. I went camping when I was 17 with my friends and the ROTC instructor from our school. The guy was 53 and the biggest badass I have ever met, tough as nails. Well, we are coming back from town and driving down this long dirt road in the mountains. My friends and I were in the back of his truck, and he slammed on the brakes. We looked over the top of the cab, and this animal was walking across the road. It looked like a coyote but was walking on its hind legs. After it crossed, it let out this awful screeching sound. When we got to the campsite, the ROTC guy made us pack up and leave. He has been all over the place with the army and has seen some crazy shit, but whatever we saw scared him to his core. This was in South Carolina, near the Oconee State Park. About seven years ago, I was driving through NYS at 17 AM as I was passing a wooded area, I saw this thing walking upright into the trees. It had legs as long as my whole body and sort of slouched, but it was still at least 7 or 8 feet tall. It was dark brown in color, almost like it was made of wood. It looked like wood. As soon as I saw it, I was overwhelmed with emotion and cried. It was the most involuntary cry I've ever had, and still, when I think about this thing I saw, even right now, I cry. Like a knot in my heart, I can't fight the tears. It's the only time I have ever seen anything that I can't explain or that I expect people to not believe me. I think about it a lot, and I recently saw it on the internet, and it brought back all these weird feelings about seeing this thing. I have referred to it as that stickman I saw but could never find more than a few cartoons for stickmen. I don't know the point of my post, but if anyone can share if they have seen something similar or heard of something, it has been haunting me for years. What surprises me is that if I think about this creature, even all this time later, I'll cry. When I was 13, I had just come home from school. There was a big storm outside, and rain was pouring down. It was around 3 or 4 p.m., and it was still pretty bright out despite the storm clouds. I was making myself a sandwich when a bolt of lightning struck the ground about half a block away from my house. The boom was loud, but immediately following the boom was a human-like screech that gave me shivers. I looked out the window through the rain and could see some kind of animal crawling from a yard to a jeep that was nearby. I thought, oh crap, a dog must have gotten hit by that bolt. I went up to the window to get a closer look and saw a big orange-red furry thing crawl under the car. It looked like an orangutan. Seriously, it was big and moved like an ape. I saw its arm grasping the side of the jeep as it crawled under. I took a minute to think about what I just saw, and then I decided to go try to get a closer look. So I went outside and slowly walked up to the jeep. When I got to the jeep, I looked under and saw a glimpse of something orange disappear into a storm drain that the jeep was parked next to. I noped the duck out of there. I still have no clue what it was. It screeched like a dying coyote, but it looked like a giant orangutan. Sewer apes. This was told to me by my dad. First and foremost, my dad was not a believer in aliens, ghosts, big feet, or portals, but this he couldn't explain away. My dad was a coon hunter, he owned several dogs and had many friends that coon hunted with him. This happened probably in the 1960s. He said one night he and a buddy of his took their dogs on a late night run. There is a small conservation area about 5 miles from our house with picnic tables and primitive campsites. A natural spring runs through the area, and it's just a beautiful place. He said they let their dogs out and were sitting on the tailgate of the truck, listening to them run. He said they treat a coon, and he and his buddy walked to where they were. These dogs were highly trained to stay at the tree and not to leave until they got there. He said they got the dogs leashed up and were starting for the truck when the dogs started whining and whimpering, acting completely out of character. His big male hound cowered down and took off, breaking the hold my dad had on him. He said they heard a noise like nothing either of them had ever heard before, mind you, these two men had been in the Missouri woods all their lives. He said it was a growling noise, and they could hear footsteps circling them. They both had headlights on, and both of them tried to see what it was, but it kept out of the light. He said it started chattering like crazy and continued stalking them. He took the gun he carried out and shot into the air a couple of times, and the stalking and chattering just stopped. He said they took the dogs and quickly made their way back to the truck. My dad's old male dog was there waiting for them. He said the dogs were acting so strange, cowering and trembling. 
They got their dogs loaded up, and when they checked the time, over two hours were missing. He said the tree the dogs were it wasn't very far from the truck, so walking to them, getting the dogs, and back to the truck would have been 30 to 45 minutes at the most. He said they never discussed it with anyone but each other. He didn't tell me until I was grown. After he passed, I asked my mom if he told her, she said he did the night it happened, and he was scared. My dad was never scared of anything that he couldn't explain. He was pale, just telling me the story. He said they were stalked by something with heavy footsteps that chattered to itself. This was in the summer, late at night. I had three paranormal experiences in Michigan this summer, two of them were in the Manistee National Forest, and one was on an extremely remote beach in Lake Superior. One, I was tent camping in the Manistee Forest Reserve in a place I'd been at least a thousand times. I awoke around 3 a.m. feeling super unnerved, and I heard a very low, guttural voice making speech-like sounds. It was pouring rain outside. I did not recognize the language as English or Anishinaabemowin, it didn't sound like an actual language. I ignored it and went back to sleep. I should mention that this land was private, and my great-aunt saved it. It's filled with ancient cedar trees that would have been harvested. My family takes care of the grove and allows it to be wild. It's surrounded by vacation cabin plots of land with some very disrespectful people. 2. My boyfriend and I went camping on the beach of Lake Superior in an extremely remote region. Our first night, I woke up again around 3 a.m. and watched the sky outside my tent instantly be illuminated by a bright light. It went from looking like midnight to mid-morning, like the sun was switched on. It was not the sun or moon, it had more of a fuzzy quality, and again, it was storming outside, there was heavy cloud cover. I was terrified. I heard a soft voice say, you know this, don't go outside and look at it. Whatever you do, don't look at it, so I did exactly that. I just ignored it and went back to sleep. In the morning, I told my boyfriend I had a scary dream about a light, and he kind of froze up and said he had a dream about a light as well. I asked him if he heard anything, and he said he didn't, he just felt like he woke up to see the sky unnaturally bright around 3 a.m. 3. I saw another light, this one over the Manistee Forest Reserve. We were planning on backcountry camping, and I had a horrible feeling about the location we were in. I told her I didn't want to stay in that location because if it rained, my car would get stuck, I drive a little hybrid through all these adventures. She agreed, and we left and went to a campground. As soon as we pulled out of the logging roads, I saw a light in the sky. It was about twice as close as an airplane and twice as bright, the color looked like orange fire with a small black dot in the middle. My friend is indigenous as well, and I pointed it out to her and was like, what the duck is that? She looked horrified by it but tried convincing me it was a bush plane or crop duster. This was at 10 p.m. on September 11th. I felt uncomfortable talking about it anymore, so we just dropped it and didn't mention it again. I will 100% return to these places, and none of this has scared me away from the woods. I was always taught to respect the land and, if something strange happens, to ignore it and continue to be respectful. I honestly feel like since I've done all the right things myself and my friends and family will be okay, I feel very confident about this. When I was little, I had an odd experience that I've never been able to find an explanation for. My great aunt, being the sweet older lady that she is, would often take myself, my brother, and my two cousins on short overnight trips to the mountains. One afternoon, we had returned from one such trip, and I was playing outside at her house in the country. I remember standing underneath a large oak tree in her backyard, and it began to sprinkle rain. Now, my grandparents live in a house adjacent to that of my great aunts. There's a walking trail connecting the two properties together, with the view being skewed from my aunt's backyard by a row of Leland cypress trees that she had planted some years prior. However, from underneath the oak tree, I could clearly see the extent of the trail and my grandparents' house further down the hill. I remember that as it began to rain, I experienced a strong desire to go visit my grandparents. In synchronous timing, I saw my grandfather walking up the trail to my aunt's house. He was wearing a blue t-shirt and was walking briskly, as if to get out of the rain and find shelter more quickly. I ran around to greet him, my view being blocked momentarily by the row of cypresses, and to my surprise, as I expected to greet him, there was no one there. Confused, I went down to my grandparents' house and knocked on the door. I was greeted by my grandmother, and my grandfather was fast asleep on the couch. He was not wearing a blue shirt, and there's no way he could have been where I saw him. I don't really have an explanation for what happened, and it has been something that has stuck with me throughout the years due to the vividness of the event and seeing him there, only for the apparition to disappear. Thoughts? I was hiking with my uncle and mom in rural Montana, and we got lost following a trail covered in downed trees. We got off of the main trail, thinking a poorly kept small trail was the one we needed to take. 
They have hiked this particular trail since they were kids and are very familiar with it. When we turned around, it was like the trail had completely disappeared. We kept walking for about an hour and somehow ended up miles ahead on the main trail than we had been in the first place. We had crossed multiple large rock formations or steep hills and gotten completely turned around without noticing. Nothing paranormal happened, but we felt disoriented, and a quiet panic set in when we couldn't find the trail that we had been on minutes before. It felt like all the animals and sounds in the forest had disappeared. We were shocked yet relieved when we ended up somewhere that seemed almost impossible given the time it took but was safe and familiar. Strangely enough, we also found antlers and the entire skeleton of an elk ripped apart and bleached in the sun on the smaller trail, and when other family members went to find it the next day, they couldn't even find the trail we had taken despite it being right off of the main trail. I even gave them coordinates for where the skeleton was, but they couldn't find it. I was four and bored. With a sigh, I looked out of my window and saw a typical dark brown shepherd mix trotting along the narrow sidewalk. I watched with curiosity as he drew closer and stopped right in front of me. This beast noticed me watching him, even though I never made a sound. The silent showdown lasted for a few seconds but felt unnerving, to say the least. The stray then proceeded to look both ways down the street before crossing it and was gone, or so I thought. Later that night, I was awoken by a low growling noise that was coming from the beanbag next to my bed. Stricken with paralyzing fear, I saw the same dog lying on it. I tried my best to wake my sleeping cousin next to me, but I couldn't. Feeling as though I was going to be attacked at any moment, I screamed and ran to my mom's room. She didn't believe me and sent me back to bed. It was just a bad dream, she said. I know what I heard and saw that night, and it was 100% not a dream. We live in the country, and it was pretty routine for my dog to wake me around 3.30 to go out and relieve herself. Unremarkable night going in. Everything was 100% normal, but at 3.30, we went out and did our business. I looked up to see something walking down the common driveway. It was human-sized and human-shaped, next to a sign post I'd seen ask past myself innumerable times, but comprised of only light. A cohesive human 3D silhouette is comprised of tiny white lightning bugs that are much smaller and emit a steady white light. It was walking, more like drifting smoothly, away from me obliquely when I yipped in surprise. The thing turned a bit, then the concave side of the head turned more and faced me directly. There were no actual facial features to speak of. I took off my glasses and wiped them on my shirt. At that time, the being stopped and was hiding behind some shrubbery. Not believing what I was seeing, I took my glasses off again and rubbed them again. In that moment, the visitor came around the foliage and stood facing me. I estimate the distance to be between 60 and 70 feet. It was at this point that the dog finished her business and, of all things, took off like a shot straight for the light. No barking, no looking back, just off like a shot to go see a friend. The being was halfway in a squat to greet the dog when, in a moment I will always regret, I took off after her. The moment I moved, the lights went out. It was real then, and it is still real today. I have no idea what it was, but it was absolutely there. We live in the vicinity of multiple Civil War battlefields, and I often wonder if my sighting was related to that or a modern wanderer. Anyone ever seen anything like this? I had something weird happen to me a few nights ago. It's not exactly spine chilling, so I haven't told anyone about it. Basically, I was driving home, a route with which I'm familiar. However, I'm not familiar with the city yet, as I just moved here. I was on the boulevard of the Allies with the moan on my right. I just passed what I believe is the prison when I noticed a bridge I'd never seen before. It looked to be under construction, and the word skeletal comes to mind when thinking about how it looked. It was just huge, dark, and unsettling. I wondered for a moment if I was passing the concrete plant and just experiencing highway hypnosis. But a moment later, the plant came into view. I drove back the next day, and, nothing. It was dark, and like I said, I'm new to the area. But I swear, I saw something weird. I know that there are construction sites around there, but this wasn't what I saw. It was probably just the dark and my unfamiliarity with the area. But I've now decided that this is my fun little ghost bridge story because, why not? I'm one of those people who sort of believes in everything, ghosts, aliens, Sasquatch, etc. but who has never had a paranormal experience of any kind, and I would always hear stories from people who had dealt with things they couldn't really explain, and I would always feel slightly jealous until I actually had a slightly strange encounter I couldn't explain, and I never want it to happen again. It was pretty straightforward and simple. One night years ago, my family was out at the neighbors and I stayed home, so it was a big, quiet empty house, which you'd think would be a nightmare already, but I was in a bit of a rush, so I wasn't even really thinking about it. 
I had the basement apartment to myself, and it was set up in a way where every area was essentially in one large room. The bathroom was a small, separate room across from a wall of closets in the dining area. I was going out to meet friends, so I had turned all but one light off and was grabbing a coat from the closet before I left when I caught a glimpse of my reflection in the shower door across the room through the open door of the bathroom, and I saw a tall man in a plain white t-shirt sort of looming over my shoulder right behind me in the reflection. I completely froze up, gasped, and just like that, in a split second, it was gone, but it truly felt like I had been staring at it for 20 minutes. Needless to say, I got my coat, bolted in a cold sweat, and didn't come back till I knew the rest of my family was home. My family had always said the house was haunted, and I would believe them and sort of actively think in my head, okay, if you're here, move something, and always be disappointed when nothing happened, but once I saw whatever I saw in the reflection of the shower door that night, I stopped that SHT so fast, and never again. Okay, here's a few, all happened within a few months of one another. First, I was lying on my bed, arms behind my head, enjoying some cartoons in my room, when I felt two very distinct and extremely cold hands touch either side of my left elbow. I turn around in a hurry, only to see nothing but the wall and an empty hallway. My mom was the only one home, and she was comfortably snoozing to the TV in the lounge room. Second, I was playing games in my brother's room, carving my way through some races, when, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a girl dressed in a white nightgown and dripping wet, black hair over her face, a la The Grudge and The Ring, both movies I hadn't heard of at this point. I freeze up, all my hairs are standing up, and my body is telling me not to move and not to look, and it'll all go away. So I'm staring at the screen for what feels like forever, and eventually my eyes get dry, and I have to blink, so I do. Now this girl is standing on the inside of the doorway, in the room. I blink again, and she inches closer without ever taking a step. I keep blinking until she's right by the side of my face, and I feel this crazy energy on my cheek and throughout my body. Finally, I muster up the courage to turn and look her in the face, and she disappears into nothingness. Panicked, I jump up and run out to my mom, who is again on the couch, blissfully unaware of the spook I just encountered. Naturally, I give her the rundown, and she gives the overactive imagination talk. Third, it was about 9.30 p.m., and myself and my brother were out in front of our house on the street, playing frisbee under the streetlights while he was waiting for his ride to work, night shift cleaner. The dang fool threw it too high, and it landed in the laneway across the street. As I watched it land, I saw, in the shadow of the fence from the streetlight above, the same girl from story 2, still dripping wet, standing right in the corner. I flip out, bolt inside, and leave my brother to collect the frisbee from the spooky lane. I moved out of that house about a year later, and I haven't experienced anything like that since. Alright, so I have bad migraine issues. I have had them for about a decade now. I vomit, pass out, go half blind, and even have weird little fever-like things. I'm told this isn't abnormal. About six months ago, I experienced sleep paralysis for the first time and saw that strange, tall, pale figure so many people see, and since then, I've started hallucinating it when my bad migraines hit. I just accepted it as a hallucination brought on by the abject terror you feel during sleep paralysis being brought out by my migraines until a couple weeks ago. You see, I was laid up with a bad migraine and had walked past the stupid thing on my way up the stairs to my apartment. It was facing away from me with its long, spindly hands pressed against the glass of the window on the landing, and, to be honest, I didn't think much of it until my wife got home and asked me if I was playing a joke on her. Annoyed and in pain, I snapped at her a little, and she dragged me to the landing to point out two large, spindly handprints on the window. My grandparents live in an old home with a lot of land on a ranch. My grandfather actually had a wife prior to meeting my grandmother a few years ago, she passed away only a year or maybe less before they met. I stay with them for holidays, but usually I bring a friend with me on my trip. This last time I visited, where I had my experience, I went alone. I usually have a hard time sleeping, so I tried to smoke some weed out of the window carefully because it was late and I didn't want to go outside because it's creepy as hell there at night. I started watching some videos, it was 3 a.m. at this point. The video paused for a second while I loaded my pipe, and out of nowhere I started to hear a loud wailing sound, which eventually became my name. Whatever this was, she was calling out my name in a creepy, ghostly way. I thought it was my grandmother, it sounded like it was coming from the hallway, so I put everything away in a panic. But nothing. In the morning, I asked her if she was calling out for me last night, and she said no and looked really confused. I had a very strange experience in the woods of Big Bear Lake, California. This particular event happened to me when I was around 10 or 11 years old, 
but I have been visiting my grandma's cabin in Big Bear Lake several times a year ever since I was a child. This isn't the first paranormal event I've experienced there, but it is definitely the most memorable. A little backstory, my grandma's cabin sits at the end of a cup de sac, right at the edge of a vast, mostly unpopulated, aside from a few other cabins, stretch of forest. No matter what I do or how I'm feeling, I always have a very strong sensation that I'm being watched when I'm in many of the rooms of the cabin alone, day or night. I've seen shadow creatures many times in this cabin, have heard strange knocking and whispering, and just generally feel like there is something else living with us there. My grandma has told me of similar experiences and has warned me before that if I ever get a strange feeling when I'm walking in the forest, I should go home immediately, but she never elaborated. Anyways, me, my dad, and my uncle were walking on a trail that we've been on hundreds of times before when we reached the first peak of the hill that we usually like to stop and look out at the view from. My dad and uncle wanted to keep hiking for a bit, but I decided to go back to the cabin on my own, as it was only 5 to 10 minutes away. I head down the usual path that I go on, not thinking too much about it, when I realize that I have no idea where I am. Everything looked the same as usual, but something was wrong. The normal path was different in a way I can't really explain. It seemed to be 10x as long as usual, everything was silent, and there was absolutely no wildlife around me, not even a squirrel. I kept having all of these morbid thoughts coming into my head about how I was lost forever or how some sort of creature was going to swoop me up. Every 10 minutes or so, I'd end up at a part of the trail that I definitely recognized, only to be in a completely alien area moments later. The path kept winding and winding downhill, and the sun was setting pretty rapidly. I had to have been walking in the direction of the cabin for more than an hour because, as I remember, I kept checking my watch and panicking. At this point, I just accepted that I was lost. I finally made it down to the street and was relieved to be able to orient myself, but it was only one street away from the cabin, although I should have been much further away. I was expecting my father and uncle to be home by now and for my parents to be worried about me being gone so long, but instead my mom asked me why I came back so soon. I asked my dad how long they were out as well, and they said they only walked maybe 15 minutes longer from when I left them. I don't know if I'm just reading into this too much or if I was just a kid with different perceptions, but something definitely felt very off about the whole ordeal. Lands End Road Hilton Head South Carolina. About 20 years ago. The light. All our pictures developed fine. Except for every picture we took on this road. We actually read about it, the light, in a ghost story book my girlfriend at the time found. So a bunch of us piled up in her car and went on a road trip. A mausoleum from the 1700s. An old hanging tree. None of the pictures we took of these things developed. No pictures that we took on this road developed at all. Every other picture we took on this mini vacation did. Creepy as trees hang over the creepy as road. A few older houses all the way at the end. And then. At night. Well. We saw the light. I'm being totally honest. A glowing, shimmering sphere about the size of a volleyball rose up from the road. It looked like it was rotating fast. White and electric blue light about 75 yards ahead of us. No houses are around on this part of the road. Just a swamp that eventually led out to the ocean on our right. And old trees and undergrowth to our left. The light came towards us, and we freaked out. I threw the car in reverse, and we backed up quickly. It slipped back under the road eventually, only to appear behind us about 35 yards away. I threw the car in gear, and we hauled ass to the end of the road, which was about 2 miles away. We didn't see the light. Just the few older, run down houses at the end of the road. We waited. Eyes wide open. Finally, we got the courage to leave after about 20 minutes. We didn't go back. Later on, a buddy of mine said he did some research. I don't know if it's true, but apparently two marines tried to drive through it one night. They ended up crashing. One was dead at the scene. The other died a few minutes later at the hospital. Also, apparently, there was an accident involving a bus. Just different creepy things. That was the only paranormal thing, event, or whatever I have ever witnessed. I have experienced something this week that is truly phenomenal that I cannot explain, something so earth-shattering and reality-breaking that I am still in shock. Adrenaline is still pumping through my system, even now that I am writing this four days later. Last Monday, August 17th, I went camping alone in Uwari National Forest. My goal was to de-stress and simply enjoy nature. I brought along a knife, some MREs, which are packs of freeze-dried food, essentially a tarp, and rope to construct a shelter. I arrive at the campground around 2 and begin my hike. It is deathly quiet. The only wildlife I encounter is two deer at the beginning of the trail, they squeal and run away. As I'm hiking, 
I notice a large amount of quartz deposits strewn about, enough to raise an eyebrow. I reach a valley clearing about a mile in and in between two streams. I constructed my shelter in the center, old campfires littered about told me this place must be a good place to camp. After finishing my tarp tent, I began to walk around, exploring the area. I hear thunder, and I decide to head back to my shelter. Here is where things start to get strange, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it still. I lay on my stomach in my tent. As the storm rolls in, I feel a strange pressure change, low bass frequency, and temperature drop, not that odd considering I'm in a valley. As it approaches, however, I feel a sensation I have never felt before, I can feel the storm above me in a way I can't fully describe. The best I can do to detail this feeling is that my consciousness was aware and expanded enough to feel this mass above me. I'm thinking, this is very weird, but don't entertain any thoughts of this possibly being paranormal. That is, until I hear the first sound. I hear a loud whoop. I'd guess a quarter mile away, the hairs stand up all over, and then it begins to pour rain very hard. At this point, I have no earthly idea what could have made that sound other than a very large animal that I'm unfamiliar with. Time passes, and I'm still lying in my tent. It's not quite dark, but it's raining, so I have nothing to do but scan the trees and listen. That's when I see the light. A very small, what looked like a coin reflecting in the sun, only there was no sun, and it was moving. It blinks on and off quickly, then reappears a few feet to the side, on and off again. I never saw it again. Not soon after I began to hear what in my mind were bipedal footsteps, they didn't seem like they came from a large animal, but I never saw what made them, they begin in the exact same spot I witnessed the light a few moments prior. I am staring intently at this spot, frozen in fear and clutching my knife, unable to move. It's silent until dusk, it's still raining, and then I hear the second, whoop, much closer and louder, on the other side of my shelter. Whatever made this noise was maybe 50 feet away, night falls, and adrenaline is pumping through me. I lay on my back, it was so dark that it did not matter if my eyes were open or closed. There was no noise for a few hours, and I began to relax slightly, that is, until I heard the babbling. I had set up in between two streams, so my rational brain was making me think it was just the water, it was not. If I had allowed myself to believe that I was actually hearing some sort of inhuman speech that far into the woods all alone, I would have panicked, or perhaps blacked out with fear. I hear this intermittently throughout the night in two places, it's as if they are whispering to each other about me, not wanting to wake me up. I lose consciousness at some point, but awake to something being thrown at my tent, a small rock. Nothing more of note happens that I'm aware of until morning, when I get the hell out of there. I arrive home and immediately begin researching what could have possibly been making those noises. I look at deer, mountain lions, bears, even raccoons, and squirrel noises. Nothing comes close. That is, until I decide to entertain the Sasquatch theory. I came across the Sierra sounds. I once saw a disappearing car on the road. I was driving up a steep hill, and the car was approaching me, coming down the hill. About halfway down, the car dipped out of sight due to a slight rise in the road. A second later, I crested the rise and, no car. One side of the road was a downward slope with dense, thick trees, and the other side was an uphill embankment. There was no way a vehicle could have run off the road on either side, especially in less than two seconds, and the vehicle approaching me couldn't have been doing more than 35 to 40 miles per hour. The weird thing is that I didn't really think much of it at the time, but gradually I realized what happened was impossible. I went back to that section of the road later that day and looked around for tire tracks or any signs of a car running off the road and found nothing. I very well could have just imagined a vehicle, I barely paid attention to it when I first saw it, but still, it was a pretty weird experience. Also, it seems to me it was an old car, maybe from the late 60s to early 70s, but I couldn't tell you make, model, or even color. Make of that what you will. Yesterday, my mom was babysitting my 6-year-old nephew for what was supposed to be a few hours, but it ended up becoming a sleepover. According to my mom, the event occurred sometime between 9.45 p.m. and 9.55 p.m. My nephew and she were sitting side by side in the living room watching TV when they both suddenly turned their heads as if something demanded their attention at once. My mom claims she saw a man rush, not run, into the dining room, pause momentarily, and face them about 14 feet away. However, all doors were closed and locked. The figure was tall, wearing a bright, almost glowing white shirt. My mom does not recall seeing this man's face, but she remembers it standing there for what felt like a half minute or so. During this time, my nephew asks, Grandma, are you seeing what I'm seeing? My mom replied, What do you see? He answers, A man. She confirms with a yes. Eventually, 
This man turns away and vanishes. Concerned and afraid, my nephew asks, who was that man? Why was he there? She replied, I don't know. I didn't see his face. He adds, I thought he was my uncle, me, and no, I'm not dead, at first. His shirt was very bright. I think it was a ghost. During this time, I was in my room, unaware of what had occurred as I worked on some 3D stuff until I went to bed. They ended up going to bed, and no further events took place. The following day, my mom informs my brother in private and later tells me. I grew up in Northeast Ohio, with our property directly bordering a large nature preserve. Rarely ever is anyone back there, except hunters during hunting season and an occasional checkup by park rangers, maybe once a year, if that. We only had two neighbors on our side of the street for the whole road, one was abandoned, and a fork river split us off from both of them. I actually later learned that the line between us and the reserve was a solid, straight line that bisected the river, so we owned less land than we thought inside the fork and more land that we didn't know was ours on the other side. But, anyway, I was walking alone back there once, and movement caught my eye across the river. I looked up and saw a crow glide down out of the air, smack face first into a tree, and fall down dead into the bushes and reeds across the river, which was creepy enough. Then, the bushes started rustling, like a human was pushing their way through them, and a voice I didn't recognize started calling my name repeatedly and giggling. Nothing ever fully emerged from the bushes, but this went on for almost a full minute while I just stood there, trying to make sense of it. Eventually, I just hoped I wasn't going crazy, turned without a word, and went straight out of the woods and back to my house. I now assume it may have been something from Native American mythology, but I've never been able to get a perfectly clear answer as to what they believe would do that. It's also not the only Native spirit world-themed encounter I've had, and most of them were on that property. Most of them were in dreams, though, but this one was while I was wide awake in the middle of the day. Nothing like it ever happened again, though. When I was around 11 to 12 years old and living in the UK, I went through a period of four months where at night I could never sleep all the way through at home. No matter how tired I was or what time I went to bed, I would always wake up around 2 to 3 a.m. if I slept at my grandmother's house, there would be no problems at all. Every night that I woke up, it would be silent in the house except for a light tapping sound coming from the corner of my bedroom, where my wardrobe used to be. Every night, I would hear this tapping noise, and it would keep me from being able to fall back to sleep, in part because I was absolutely pooping my pants. The tapping sound was never continuous, it would tap for different lengths of time, then stop before continuing again. This counted out my mother's, it must be next door neighbor's clock, when I told her all about it. Creating wardrobe doors and just my imagination were two other explanations that my mother gave me. Also, I'd use that wardrobe daily when getting changed into fresh clothes, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I remember one night when I decided enough was enough. I had spent about an hour lying in bed, listening to the tapping, and struggling to sleep. I jumped out of bed and went over to my wardrobe, grasped both of the handles, and flung the doors open. There was a pause for about one minute while I had the handles in my hands, once again pooping myself. As the doors flung open, a t-shirt that I'd had on one of my hangers hit me in the face, and I had a feeling like something had punched me in the stomach. I remember lying on the floor in my room, not sure how long for, but it was like time just jumped forward three hours and my parents were getting up for work. I said nothing and went about my day as if nothing had happened. That was the last night that I ever woke up in the early hours of the morning, and the last time I ever heard that tapping sound. As I've grown older, I've spoken to my mother about it all, and she has told me many stories about our old house, and I have returned the favor with my other experiences. She said that because I was young and got scared easily, she always tried to find a rational excuse for whatever spooky scenario I ever told her I was in. Any ideas or explanations? I grew up poor. We didn't have cable, internet wasn't available, and we lived in a rural, isolated location with no other kids to go out and play with. As a teen, I would often spend my time hunting or riding my bike a few miles to the river to go fishing. I was the stereotypical country boy. I was and am completely comfortable and at home in the woods by myself, even at night. We had hounds, and I took them out alone that night to go hunt raccoons. I went to our hunting grounds and turned them loose, as I had done plenty of times before. I sat down and waited for them to open on a track. We didn't have the best dogs, they were young and not trained up well yet. If they couldn't find a raccoon track that would open for a rabbit, a deer, or something, after a few minutes, they hadn't opened, and that was very odd. I started to walk and call for them, but I wasn't getting any response. I kept walking and came out of some brush into the cow field so I could walk easier and go call for them into the next holler over. As I come out into the cow field, I notice the entire ride line, 
a couple hundred yards worth of ridgeline, is glowing red. I first thought that the farmer was clearing brush and had a giant bonfire burning. I went to check it out and make sure it wasn't instead a forest fire starting. As I got closer to the top of the ridge, I noticed the glow was solid and not flickering like flames should, I noticed there was no smell of smoke, I noticed the sheer amount of light, and most of what I noticed was the color, it was a bright, vibrant red. The only way I can describe it is the way a stop light on a dark street will cast a red glow on everything, that's the color that was reflecting back to me off all the trees, and in the air it was so much light, you know how a football stadium with the lights on can be seen even over a hill. I froze, this wasn't something natural. This was way off the beaten path, with no electricity and no way to produce that much light. I had a 20 gauge single shot shotgun with me loaded with birdshot. I happened to have a few shells of buckshot and some slugs in my backpack. I quickly loaded a heavier round and held a few other shells in my hand for quicker follow-up shots. I prepared to defend my life. I was absolutely terrified and believed whatever was happening was a danger to me. I snuck home as quickly and quietly as possible without using my flashlight. I told my mom and stepdad what I had just seen, but they brushed it off, and I was scolded for leaving the dogs in the woods. I guess they thought I was just lazy and didn't want to go after them or something. They knew the way home and were waiting in their doghouse for breakfast the next morning. The next day, I went back and looked for any signs of what I might have seen. There was absolutely nothing out of the ordinary, no burnt out areas from a fire, no fresh tire tracks from a field party, nothing out of the ordinary, and I looked hard for something to explain what I had seen. A few days after that, I woke up and went into the living room. My stepdad was waiting for me, he jumped up and said he had also seen that light. He had been hunting in another location in the opposite direction of the house, but both were still within walking distance. He was waiting for the dogs to open with his light off when three bright flashes of red light lit everything around him. He said it was bright enough that he could have read a newspaper. We never had another encounter with the red light. I don't know what it was. That same property also had a very old abandoned house that I had a few creepy, more ghostly encounters around. Pre-Civil War, it never had plumbing or an electrical connection. There were chains in the basement walls for slaves, I never saw a full-on ghost or anything, I just saw things I could not explain and a few creepy coincidences. I have never been as afraid as when I encountered that light, though. I regret, as an adult, not cresting the top of that ridge so I could see it because it has made me wonder for 15 years what the hell that was. I'm 18. My dad is dying. I'm home alone, taking care of the house and my little brother. My dad is in the hospital, wasting away. At this point, he's got, like, a 50% chance of making it. I'm sleeping in my parents' bed while they are away at the hospital. I'm sleeping alone. I'm lying on my side facing the door, and a figure is just there. But seeing him isn't frightening in and of itself. He looks weird. Reddish skin, black eyes, and a black trench coat that I could maybe not shit myself over. But the way you feel when you see him. That's what terrifies you. This pit in your stomach makes you feel like you have to present something in front of the whole school. Except there is a gunman at the school, and he'll shoot you if you do it wrong. Like that. Except worse. I once told a friend, you know what it feels like when all is right in the world? That inner peace and happiness? It's the direct inverse of that. And it is. He's standing in my parents' doorway. And I feel like I'm going to puke. I blink, and he's gone. Whatever. Bad dream. A couple days later. Again. I see him. He is one step closer. Same feelings. Same dread slash terror. This continues for some time. Always a single step, never more, never less. Well, eventually he makes it to the bedside. And I thought I couldn't feel any worse. But it was actually possible to feel worse. He bends unnaturally. To the side. He bends to the side in the same manner that the rest of the world would bend over. Rotating his spine to the side 90 degrees, his face is now face to face with mine. Like we were two lovers post coitus or something. But it doesn't feel like that. Then the smile. The smile makes him look insane. But content. He knows something I don't know. Then, a few days later, my dad died. Nothing dramatic, like he flatlined or something, happened. But he did go. Then I saw the man again and again, and one last time. Each time, within less than two weeks, someone I knew died. It's just hard to talk about because it makes me cry. When we were about 11, we were playing manhunt in an abandoned factory. It was three stories high and mostly empty, with a large, wide, wooden stairway up the middle. It was pretty old, probably built in the 20s or 30s. My friend and I were hunting his older brother with our plastic cap guns. We heard him moving around on the top floor, 
just above us, so we took flank positions on either side of the staircase and waited for him to come down. He soon started walking slowly down the staircase, and we heard him round the corner at the landing and then start stepping down the flight right beside us. When we were just about to reach the bottom, we jumped out to shoot him, but there was no one there. We were standing no more than two feet from where the footsteps ceased. It was one of those moments where you just freeze in terror. My friend and I looked at each other in horror and then ran down to the first floor to climb out of the broken window we used to get inside. The area behind the building was mostly dirt and big rocks. There, sitting on top of a large boulder, was my friend's brother. He was just as freaked out as we were. He told us he fled from the building 10 minutes ago, down a fire escape, when he heard footsteps following him around on the upper floor. The three of us never played there again. Then, about 10 years after this story, a developer renovated the building into apartments. I always wonder how the ghost must be enjoying haunting so many new people. The building is in Lindsay, Ontario. So, my story happened about 15 years ago, when I was around 10. Every Saturday, my family would go around to my aunt's house to visit. After lunch, my cousin, who is a few years older than me, and I decided to grab two skateboards and play with them. Neither of us could actually skate, he lived on a steep hill, so we would just sit on the boards and skate down the hill. Anyway, as we left his driveway and made our way up the hill, we were stopped by two creepy old women who appeared to be in their 60s. I can't remember much of what they said, but I do remember them saying, you two are cute looking boys. Have a good day and see you later, or something similar along those lines, I've been ages, so I can't fully remember what they said, and they looked at each other and laughed. Not a cheerful laughter, but I remember the distinct cackling kind of laughter, yes, like you would picture a witch laughing. They then proceeded to walk down the hill. I remember asking my cousin if he knew them, and he said he had never seen them before. We thought nothing of it and carried on to the top of the hill. When we reached the top of the hill, we heard a scurrying noise to our left, and all of a sudden, a black cat jammed directly over our heads and disappeared somewhere. Then another black cat to our left was walking straight towards us as if it were getting ready to pounce, never dropping eye contact. My cousin and I looked at each other in fear, planted our butts on the skateboards, and went down the hill as fast as we could. We ran into the house and shut the door behind us. We were both panicking, but we didn't really talk about what we had just seen. My first thought was that the two old ladies we had seen were somehow witches and had transferred into the cats at the top of the hill, considering they had a cackling laugh and said they would see us soon. I'm not a believer in ghosts, witches, or anything like that. I always believe there is a logical explanation for everything. I mean, realistically, the ladies were just being nice to us, and the cats were startled when we got to the top of the hill. However, this still plays on my mind to this day. The fact that we saw the two old ladies whom my cousin had never seen in the area before, what they said to us, and the two black cats. Especially with the connection black cats supposedly have to witches. I brought this up with my cousin a few years ago to see if I had just manifested this in my mind somehow, but he said he remembers it along the lines I described. If anyone could help clarify what we saw, that would be handy. About eight or nine years ago, me and some friends were on a camping trip, and we encountered something weird in the woods that seemed to have followed us home. I was in high school at the time, and me and my friends went camping in some private land in western Nebraska, where there's some bad lands in the foothills of the Rockies, beautiful land over there. Late one night, we were playing airsoft on top of a platform, it was a sort of zombie survival game mode that we made up. Survivors would hide while the zombies searched for people to shoot. If you were shot by a zombie, you became a zombie, the last man standing wins. Me and one friend were hiding in some tall grass near the edge of a roughly 50-foot cliff drop that was to our backs, so no one could sneak up on us. At one point, we spot a strange orb of light that hovered around the area for a few seconds, then, with insane speed, accelerated into the air and disappeared. We have it on GoPro footage, but it was pitch black out and the video quality sucked, so unfortunately, it's not worth much. Right after, we heard movement in the grass behind us. The grass was indented as if something were there, but there was nothing. Like I said earlier, there's a cliff drop behind us, so no one could have snuck up on us, and if it was an animal, we would have seen it. Nothing else happened during that trip, we kind of just shrugged it off, as sometimes weird shit just happens in the middle of the woods at night. However, things got more strange a few days after getting home. Me and my friend both had dreams and witnessed the same symbol in both our dreams. In my dream, I was in the woods at night, and there was a deer in front of me. The deer was just eating some grass and doing deer-related things. Then I heard some movement in the grass behind me, much like what me and my friend heard behind us that one night playing airsoft. Then, everything went black, and I saw a glowing red symbol in front of me, 
which almost resembled a dream catcher. At that point, I woke up, happened to look out my window, and there was a deer in my driveway. I live in the middle of a city with no parks or wildlife around me, so it was very unlikely for a deer to ever be anywhere near me. In my friend's dream, from what I remember, he told me, at least, that he was exploring an old abandoned factory that was on the land we were camping at. When he opened a door inside, a blast of hot air hit him, and he saw the glowing symbol through the doorway. We told each other about our dreams and that we saw a weird symbol. Without saying what the symbols looked like, we both went into separate rooms to draw the symbols on a piece of paper and compare them. They were exactly the same, nothing else happened until a couple years later, when we went back for another camping trip. One morning, I'm out on a hike, and I end up finding a deer skull that was missing an antler. I thought it was pretty cool, so against my better judgment, I took it home with me. I left the skull in my closet, on the top shelf, with the closet door closed, keep that in mind. A few days after the trip, I had yet another weird dream. I'm in the woods at night again, and that same deer is in front of me. However, the deer is now dead, and on its side, as if carved with a knife, is that symbol. The deer is also missing the same antler that the skull is. I heard the same movement in the grass behind me, so I began to turn around. What I saw behind me was the silhouette of a tall bipedal creature with long arms, long hair, glowing white eyes, and large antlers. An intense fear washed over me as I immediately woke up panicked and sweaty. The first thing I do is look out my window to see if the deer is there again, but what I actually saw was worse. The deer skull was on the floor in the middle of my room, facing me. It's been years since anything else happened, and I still have that skull displayed on top of a bookshelf. I don't know if it's smart to keep it or not, but I guess I'll find out the next time I take a camping trip to the same area. In August of 2019, I loaded a bunch of camping gear onto my bicycle and spent the better part of the next seven months riding 5,300 miles, 8,500 kilometers, around much of the US. Along the way, I most often preferred to go to a wild camp, simply finding somewhere to disappear into the woods at night, somewhere people were unlikely to find me and even less likely to care that I was there. After a month of this, I had grown quite accustomed to the fact that a nighttime forest is far from a quiet place. At the very least, there would always be the constant droning of thousands of crickets and toads. It didn't take much of a breeze to stir music from the trees. Perhaps I'd camp near a babbling creek. It was always the highlight of my nights, though not particularly uncommon, to hear the yips and howls of a distant pack of coyotes, and I fondly recall one night when I set up camp right between two owls who spent much of the night calling back and forth. But then there was this one night. In mid-September, I was biking through the mountains of western Montana. That day, I had been traveling through a particularly rural area. By the time the sun neared the western horizon and I began looking for a place to camp, I could hardly even remember the last time I'd seen another person or a car. I was way out there. It didn't take me long to find somewhere to set up camp. After pushing my bike into the woods, I pitched my tent and made my bed. I spent the final few minutes of sunlight journaling and planning the next day's ride, then brushed my teeth before turning out my light and laying down to go to sleep. That's when I made a disturbing realization. Outside my tent, there were no owls or coyotes, nor trickling water. There was not so much as a single cricket chirping or the slightest movement in the air to pull sounds out of the dry leaves of early autumn still clinging to the trees. It was dead silent. And that was terrifying. I can only describe it as the loudest silence I've ever heard. It felt as though the entire forest was hiding from an equally silent predator. Suddenly, the snapping of a twig, a common sound normally lost in the cacophony of the forest, sounded like a gunshot. It was the worst night's sleep of the entire seven months I was traveling, and when I heard the first bird call of the pre-dawn hour, it was such a huge relief. When my parents were dating back in the early 90s, they went on a weekend getaway to a lakeside resort in Nova Scotia. It was extremely old and outdated, but my parents liked that vibe, it gave the place personality. On their last night there, my mom had an extremely vivid dream. In the dream, a young girl came to her, pleading for help, she wasn't saying anything to my mom but the message was conveyed in her facial expression. The girl was also dripping wet, as if she were just submerged in water. My mom felt this strong urge to figure out what she needed help with, and she actually woke up from her dream feeling this urgency still. When she woke up, though, she realized my dad wasn't in bed next to her. Mom got out of bed and started looking around the cabin for my dad when she finally found him at the sliding back doors, that led to the back of the property, which faces the lake. He had opened one of the doors and was in the middle of putting his shoes on, dressed in his pajamas. She tried asking him what he was doing, but he didn't answer. After calling his name a few more times with no response, she went up to him and had to shake him awake, 
realizing he was sleepwalking, my dad is not a sleepwalker, and to this day, this was the only time he was caught sleepwalking. He woke up obviously confused but said he was having a really weird vivid dream, and in the dream, he felt like he needed to go outside to check on the property. So it was either a weird coincidence that my parents both had an extremely vivid dream at the same time or something else was at play. The next morning, when they were checking out, they inquired about the history of the property. After some discussion, the receptionist revealed that other guests had also asked about the same thing and shared some unexplained or paranormal things that happened during their stay. It turns out the lodge is known to be haunted, which my parents only found out at the end of the stay. A common sighting is a ghost sailboat, which appears at night. It's usually seen as a light floating on the lake or a faint outline of a boat, but as it approaches closer, it fades from view. I still wonder who the girl in my mom's dream was. I don't believe in ghosts personally, but I'm fascinated by them and the stories people share. But one crazy ducking night in my house literally had me and my family questioning our sanity. So I was in my bedroom at around 1 o'clock in the morning, and the room seemed to seize up. I heard some very labored breathing and walking on the carpet from the door towards my bed. It was so loud that I sat up, frozen by fear. But, of course, there was no person to be seen, just the noise of them walking and breathing. The breath on my head as it came close to the bed started to make my hair move. I was too scared to move, I just had to let it pass. The breathing got worse as I heard it leave the room, but at least it was leaving, I thought. I knew I was awake, though, because I sat in my bed for at least 5 minutes before running to my mother's bedroom to wake her and tell her what the duck just happened. I didn't wake up in between. I then slept in a spare bedroom, obviously. The next morning, my mother intensely questioned me regarding what exactly I experienced. So I tell her again, and before admitting that she didn't believe me last night, she reveals that she had exactly the same experience and was also positively awake as our dog barking awoke her from sleeping anyhow. This was all strange enough until my sister came downstairs and heard us talking, only for her to reveal that she had a dream that an invisible entity came into her room and beckoned her to follow it. She followed it into my room first and then into my mother's room. I tell people this story, and they immediately say that my sister was sleepwalking, but I'm quick to remind them that me and my mother were definitely awake, and the source of the noise was totally invisible. Plenty of other paranormal things have happened in this house, but nothing quite so bizarre and without explanation. I spent a lot of time trying to rationalize that night, but I simply couldn't. Just so strange. I don't believe in ghosts or anything paranormal, I'm not religious or spiritual, and I just generally don't think anything of the sort exists. But tonight I encountered something that genuinely terrified me and that I couldn't form any sort of logical explanation for. So I have a dog, and I almost always walk her at night due to my schedule. I'm currently living with my parents, who live in a very upscale private community with which I'm extremely familiar and have walked hundreds of times both during the day and night. It's a very safe place, and I never feel any sort of risk walking at night aside from visibility to passing cars, for which I wear reflective armbands. Tonight I was taking my dog on her daily walk, and we crossed a road that led from one section of the subdivision to another. While entering this next section, I noticed up ahead, about 80 to 100 meters, a figure moving down the road from the direction I was going. The best way I can describe it is if a person was wearing a slightly luminescent white hat and skipping down the street. The problem is, first of all, that there wasn't enough light to get a clear view of whatever I saw. I could definitely see the light that appeared to be a hat, if it was a person wearing one, but not enough to discern anything more, and the most disconcerting thing was that even if it was a person wearing a light-up hat skipping down the street, they would have been moving in slow motion, almost suspended in the air in between jumps. There was also no sound. After seeing this, I yelled out several times, asking if there was anyone there, but didn't get any response. At that point, I noticed that my dog was whimpering and had her tail between her legs. For me, this was the scariest part because I've never seen her act like that in any situation. If she sees another person while we're out walking, she'll get excited and pull on the leash, wanting to go up and say hi. If there's another dog or animal she's unsure of, she'll bark and start running in circles around me. I have never, under any circumstances, seen her act scared and start whimpering. That was enough to make me go nope and turn the hell around. Like I said, I don't have any belief in anything paranormal, but I had no intention of ducking around with whatever the hell I had just encountered. So we turned around and finished our walk. I admittedly glanced behind frequently, making sure there wasn't anyone following. We're now home safe, which leads to me typing this right now. I've never experienced something like that, and I have no idea what to think. Rationally, I think it would be more likely that I hallucinated or something rather than it being anything paranormal, 
but the thing that bugs me the most is my dog's extremely uncharacteristic reaction. If I had been seeing things, then why would she have behaved in a way she never had before? When I was around 12, my friend and I saw something that I could never explain. If someone told me they saw this, I wouldn't believe them, but I know what I saw. The house I grew up in was on the corner of a city street. The way the house was situated, from my bedroom windows looking out, I had two large ones side by side, you could see the street and the entire side of the house across from us. A guy friend of mine lived on the second floor of that house, and he and his family were gone for the weekend. My friend and I were in my room playing Nintendo, and I was sitting on my bed facing the windows. It was evening, but it must not have been later than 6 or 7 because my friend wouldn't have been over too late. It was her turn to play, and I'm watching the screen, but something catches my eye, and I look out of my window and see something in the friend who is gone for the weekend's home. I kid you not, it looked like what you would describe a yeti to be. It was white, as tall as the ceiling, and covered in hair. I frantically told my friend to look, and she paused the game and immediately saw the same thing. We got down on the floor and crawled to my window to watch this thing. It was destroying the house. Like breaking chairs, breaking dishes, ripping up the sofa, etc. I remember asking my friend if she was seeing what I was seeing, and she confirmed that she was. We watched this thing for a few minutes and then kind of started diverting our attention to each other in like an oh my god what the duck way, and when we eventually looked back, it was gone. We both kind of seemed to instinctively know that this was something that should stay between us. It wasn't discussed, but the vibe was there. In order to get home, she would have to walk past that house, so she had her dad pick her up. I tried my best to go to sleep, but I kept waking up and looking out to see if I saw it again, but I didn't. The next day, I was sitting outside my house, waiting for the friend who lived in the house to come home. I felt I needed to be there when they eventually came running out of their destroyed home so that I could try to explain what we saw the night before. They pulled up sometime in the afternoon, and I hid behind my door in some kind of fear. I knew this was going to be bad, and I was scared to be a part of it. I watched them go inside, and I wait. And wait. And nothing. Eventually the friend and his dad come out to get luggage from the car and look as nonchalant as you can be. At this point, I'm confused. The house was destroyed. We saw it happen. I go across the street to my friend, and he greets me. I'm kind of like, um, what's up? Everything cool? And he starts talking to me about something, and it hits me that the house is fine. Everything was as they left it. At this point, I'm so confused because I know what I saw. And I have a witness. Later on, the friend who witnessed this event and I talk, and neither of us can understand what the duck happened. But life just kind of moves on. It wasn't until I was an adult and I read about so-called glitches in the Matrix that I started to think that might be an explanation for what I saw. Some poor prehistoric creature got whirled into a house, freaked the duck out, and then glitched back, returning everything to its normal state. I mean, yeah, it sounds ducking crazy, but I racked my brain for decades trying to come up with something more based on reality, and I just can't land on anything. I've only told two people what we saw that night, my mom and my husband. Neither outright say I'm lying, because they know me and know I'm not someone who tells stories, but they don't seem to enthusiastically believe me either. I get it. They probably think I saw something that they can logically explain, but I swear, unless you see it, it's impossible to know how real it was. When I was a junior in high school, I had a really bad scare at 13 Benz. Prob about 11 years ago, I'm 28 now. For those of you who have never heard of it, 13 Benz is a place near Harmarville, forget the exact location, that is rumored to have once been a site for an orphanage. Apparently, it burned down in the early 1900s, and now the woods surrounding the location are haunted. As you make your way and travel through the 13 different bends in the trail, you'll start to hear the little footsteps, the screams of children, and gripping on your clothes. Now I don't believe in paranormal shit, and I'm not religious, but 11 years ago, me and a bunch of friends went at night and were smoking weed. We got through the 13 different bends and decided we wanted to smoke some more at the end. We went up this little hill and found this cinder block building that couldn't have been more than 10 by 12 or so, with one little shitty window and a door. It looked obviously abandoned and more like a storage shed of some sort. We shined our lights from our phones in the window to peer through, and there were pentagrams in red paint all over the floor and walls, and a creepy ass doll laying in the middle. There were other signs that someone had been in there, like muddy footprints and cigarette butts. We ducked off out there so fast. Between the weed we smoked and the shit we saw in that little shed, we were shitting ourselves on the way back. So this is my personal experience, it has only happened once and never again. But I will never forget it. It was 4 years ago in 2018, and it was a school night, as I was having trouble sleeping. 
I usually take a while to fall asleep, but this was like I physically couldn't sleep. So I decided to go use the bathroom. I browsed on the phone on the toilet and just went along with my business. The way the house was structured was that there was a small hall connecting two rooms and the rest of the house. So when I walked back to the room, I look out the hall to the kitchen as I see it. In the kitchen was a glowing light as it was a rectangle-shaped object floating as it's surrounded by a black mass of a smoky substance. At first, I thought it was my fridge, but it was on the wrong side of the kitchen. Then I started to think of other reasons as it stared right at me. We kept eye contact for a minute, and as I was so scared, I didn't even think of filming with the phone. But I couldn't be staring all night, I needed sleep, and school is tomorrow. So make a run for my room. As I shut the door, I felt it close to the house in just a second. I didn't even lock the door. I didn't care and just jumped in bed and hid under my sheets. The next thing I knew, it was inside my room. I didn't even hear the door open. It floated above my bed as it breathed down my neck. It soon lay in bed with me as I was petrified to move. The next morning, it was gone, as I had slept with that thing all night. I tell my family and friends, as my mother told me, that it was a guardian angel. I'm still not sure what I saw. My rational explanation. I was just tired, I was hallucinating because of it. It wasn't a dream or sleep paralysis because I was moving and awake. I had another small experience with the same being, as it slept in my bed again as I just didn't try to do anything, and the next morning it was gone again. I haven't seen or felt it since. My brain thought it was the shape of a human with a long black body, and the light was its face. If you know what I saw, please tell me, because I will not let this rest. I know what I saw was a real being, we were both aware of each other. We both knew we saw each other. So I must know. Was it a ghost? A shadow person? An alien? Angel or demon? Whatever it is, I'm just glad it was friendly. This is a true story. My friend and I walked home together every day, we'd always finish our school day, change into our normal clothes, and head out. We were 14 years old and were instructed to always take the same route home, but we were running late, so we decided to take a different route. The normal route has a bridge for cars and pedestrians, it crosses a six-lane highway, but closer to school, there's a pedestrian bridge that heads into the woods, but it's faster than our normal route. We head to the bridge and get there, there's no one to be seen, so it's all good. We go over the bridge, approaching the other side. We see a man sitting next to the bridge with his head between his knees. As we get closer, we hear him mumbling. We approach him, his back is facing us, we don't know what to do, so we decide to leave him because he's probably drunk. In the corner of my eye, I see something. I turn to see a man in work clothes, his arms in front of him, one hand holding the other, just standing behind us. We leave, we don't look back, this guy came out of nowhere. As we walk through the forest, we talk about school and sports, and my friend stops, points, and tells me he wants to check out the weird rocks to the left of us. I agree, and we approach the area. As we get closer, I see that there are a bunch of these rocks stacked on top of one another, forming a circle, a round slab stone is in the middle of it all, with symbols engraved in it, dry blood covers the stones, and small metal figures of some sort are placed into the earth with what looked like human hair on the ground. I stand in shock, as I am not sure what I'm looking at. This screams caution, but I'm unable to move, so I can leave. My friend makes a weird noise. I turn to see him looking into the distance. I see something getting closer. He grabs my shoulder. It sets me free from my status as a statue. We take off, and I hear the movement of bushes behind me, breaking branches on the ground. Is something chasing us? I look back, but I can't see shit I'm running as fast as my legs can take me, and my friend is pulling away slowly but surely. We kept running till we got to my house, it was about 5 kilometers from the stones and blood. My friend slept over that night, not wanting to walk home alone. We got to school the next day, told our friends the story about the blood and stones we found, discussed what that place could have been used for, and decided not to go there again. The school day went by. My friend and I headed for the school gate so we could go home. We stepped outside and said goodbye to our other friends. When I felt a tap on my shoulder, I turned around, expecting to see a teacher or a student. I turned around to look into the man that was at the bridge, the one in work clothes. The questions I ask myself to this day are, why was he there, and how did he find us? I looked at this man with an emotionless face. He opened his mouth and said, that man next to the bridge, he's dead. He then turned around and walked away, leaving me and my friend speechless. We don't know anything about the blood and stone, we never went back there again, but we did see another one a few years later that also had weird shit going on. We spoke about this almost 10 years later, 
discussing the possibility that he killed the man next to the bridge and that we could have been next, but, if you believe in the paranormal, years after this happened, someone heard the story and called me, giving their opinion. He said, maybe it wasn't a person at all, maybe it was death collecting a soul, we were just at the wrong place at the wrong time, he just tried to protect innocent kids by coming to our school and telling us what he did. This gives me the chills even thinking about it, but I had an experience where I was living with my ex at his parents' house. We were sleeping not far from the railway tracks, and everything was fine for a few months. Then one night I jolted up when I got awoken by what sounded like a little girl screaming and yelling for help. It sounded like it was right outside my bedroom door, but there were no little girls in the house. I didn't go outside to investigate or anything because it was like 1 AM, and I didn't see why there would be a young girl outside at that time of night, so I just imagined it. This happens like six or seven times throughout the night over the span of about three hours, a scream followed by please, someone help. I had also woken up my boyfriend at the time and asked if he had heard anything, but he said he hadn't, and I should just try to go back to sleep, it seems to get closer and closer each time until there is a scream right next to my ear. I sit up with my ears ringing after what felt like a scream right into my ear. There was what looked like a little girl standing right next to the bed, looking right at me and saying, help me, please, help. I turned away for two seconds to grab my phone for a torch, but when I turned back, there was nothing. I couldn't sleep the rest of the night, even though I didn't hear any more screams or anything else, but I did grab another blanket as the room was way too cold, which at the time I put down to being in the middle of winter. The next day, I was told that a little girl's body was found next to the train tracks from that night. The worst part was that it was determined that it had taken her around three hours to actually die from her injuries. Three hours, around the same amount of time that I heard the cries for help. The tracks were too far away for me to actually hear if she was really asking for help, and her jaw had been broken, so she wouldn't have been able to speak anyway, so maybe her spirit knew she was probably going to die, so it left her body early. I have no idea how to explain this, as well as the fact that it seemed to be right outside my bedroom door, not all the way outside by the tracks. This was around 4 or 5 years ago, and to this day, I get woken up every now and then, maybe once every 2 or 3 months, by a little girl's voice saying, you didn't help, you didn't help. I am terrified that she might do something to get back at me for not helping her, even though I didn't know what was really going on. I am currently 23 years old, and this experience happened most likely when I was around 6 or so, give or take a few years, it happened when I was extremely young. It was a pretty uneventful night. I and one of my close friends were having a sleepover at my house, and something possessed us to decide to go outside despite it being dark out. At my childhood home, I had a nice little swing set, so I guess we wanted to play around or something idiotic like that. Something important to note is that for my entire life, even to this day, most likely because of this event, I have been quite scared of the dark, though I have gotten better about that in my adult years. Anyways, we walked outside, and the motion light turned on, which allowed us to see where we were going, but the whole time I was internally freaking out. We just about made it to the swing set, and I had the bright idea to turn around, because when you're afraid you're going to see something scary, the most logical thing to do would be to constantly scan the area for said scary thing. To this day, what I saw in that moment has been burned into my memory, and no matter how many years have passed, I haven't forgotten a single detail. In our front yard, we had a giant willow tree, and the light from the motion sensor was shining directly at it, and in the middle of it, I saw this strange dog. It had yellow fur and red eyes like what you'd see from a laser pointer, and I was able to see clearly through it. Its body was pointed towards my home, but its head was turned towards me. We had made direct eye contact, and I imagine it was only a few moments, but in my memory it felt like a lot longer. I don't think I'll ever forget those tiny, bright red laser-like eyes. Now what happens next isn't the most clear to me, for I don't remember if it disappeared while I was looking at it or if I turned my head and then it was gone, however, I sort of went into panic mode at this point. I think I may have been in shock or something because I turned around and continued walking to the swing set with my friend, and after just a moment or two of sitting there, I couldn't handle it anymore so I just booked it back into my house with him. There is one more thing I remember about that night, however, the details of this aren't as clear as before, so I could be misremembering them a bit, but I'll mention it anyway. So that very same night, I was quite freaked out, and my friend and I went back inside to do whatever it was we did as kids. I have no idea. However, the last thing I remember about that night is that he and I were standing right next to our screen door that led to our backyard, where we had a fireplace and some stacked plastic chairs. The only difference this time is that he saw something as well, though I haven't spoken to him about this ever, nor have we even been in contact since we were kids. What we saw this time was a bit more strange, for instead of a physical creature, we saw a red light swirling in circles underneath one of the plastic chairs. 
the glass sliding door must have been quite clean for me to see that. However, due to how dark it was and with the light from inside shining out, I can see it being plausible. However, that was it, and I'm not quite sure what happened afterwards. I will admit it isn't the most exciting ghost story, though it's definitely a lot more interesting than having experienced none at all. It's pretty funny, actually, because I've been a skeptic my entire life, and the only reason I believe in anything even remotely paranormal is because of that event. To this day, I have always kept my eyes peeled in the dark, just in case I see a glimpse of something interesting again, despite how terrified I am. I'm not entirely sure if I even want to see something, but that curiosity inside me to relive what I experienced back then is always there. Perhaps I'd like to see something again just to reassure myself that what I saw back then was real and not just my mind playing some extremely vivid tricks on me. People usually don't believe this sort of thing, so I never talk about it outside of the internet. Being completely honest, I'm not entirely sure I'd believe someone if they told me something like this. Even after seeing what I saw back then, I still can't explain it. When my son was a baby, we had a sound monitor next to his crib, and my wife was downstairs and heard a voice on the other end of the monitor saying, what are you doing, cutie? Huh? What are you doing? She said it sounded playful, like how people talk to babies or pets. She ran up to his room, thinking someone was in the house, and he was just lying there awake, looking around. When he got a little older and could walk and talk, he was lying on the living room floor, playing with blocks. Something down the hall caught his attention, and he got up and stared down the hall. I asked him what was wrong because he kept looking at me, all concerned, and then looking back down the hall. He ran over, climbed in my lap, pointed to the hallway, and said, Monkey. I think maybe he was seeing some kind of shadowy apparition, and monkey was the only word he knew to describe what he saw. That house always creeped us out, even before he was born. We always had that weird feeling like someone was watching us, and one time I got slapped on my foot while laying in bed. My mom sometimes sees ghosts, and my sisters and I also have the ability to sometimes see or sense them. One of my sisters and I actually saw one together when we were very young, seven and four. She saw more details than me. I think her ability has always been stronger than mine. The scariest experience was when we were teenagers. She was house-sitting for a relative and asked me to go and hang out, so my cousins and I went there and spent the night. My cousins and I slept on the living room carpet. All night, I could feel something near the door, a presence, but I couldn't see it. I could feel it staring at us the entire night, and it had a negative vibe, but I didn't want to scare my cousins, so I didn't say anything. By the time I woke up in the morning, one of my cousins was holding on to me as if using me as a shield in their sleep. I'm guessing they felt it, too. Later on, when my sister and I had a moment alone, she asked me if I saw anything. I asked her, what have you seen? Without telling her what I felt. She said that a being has been crouching at that corner for weeks now. Every time she went to babysit, she could see it staring at her with ill intent. I was actually a little upset that she didn't tell me earlier on and let us sleep in its presence, but I also understood that she didn't want to be there dealing with it by herself. That's the scariest experience I've ever had. I was about 12 or 13, and we were at my grandfather's house out in Orland, California. If you have been there, you know it's hot, like really ducking hot, and all you can do is sit in the pool and pray your house cools down. A common thing me and my siblings would do is swim in the irrigation systems that run off my grandpa's farm. It was dirty, but we were hot and didn't much care. Anyway, I was one to sleepwalk, even at our house, I would sleepwalk, but I would do it aggressively at my grandparents. Open doors and windows, go out on the farm, eat, you name it. I did it by sleepwalking. So it wasn't uncommon for us to lock the doors, so I didn't get out. But one night I managed to get out of the house completely and woke up in the irrigation ditch, only it wasn't the one by my grandpa's house. I didn't know how late it was, and I was soaked in my pajamas. There were no cars, and when I sat up, I couldn't hear the frogs or crickets, so it was silent. The silence made my skin crawl, and I was very scared already, so the following did not help. When I stood up and managed to walk into the street, there was a man standing at the other end. All I could see was his outline in the light of the moon, and I instantly started crying. I didn't even hesitate to run down the street. I had no idea where I was, but I didn't care. I ran like hell, like I had never run in my entire life. Once I felt like I had run far enough, I looked behind me, but the man was still there, the same distance from me, and still just standing there. It was like I had pulled him with me when I ran, and he was just stuck to me. I looked back in complete shock and confusion. I didn't understand how he had stayed the exact distance from me. I didn't scream, I was so scared, I just cried. Staring at the man, he finally turned and walked the other way, but I didn't look away. 
I was still so confused, but he finally stopped walking when a car came down the road right in front of him and hit him. But it didn't actually hit him, he went through the car and then watched the car as it stopped by me. Still looking at the man, the car that was now next to me asked me if I was okay. Crying, wet, and scared, I can't even imagine how I must have looked to my grandpa's neighbor, but he drove me home. That's not even the weird part, I haven't slept in a long time. In my hometown, there's this old railroad track that's mostly reclaimed by tree-lined marshland. The track was still above water unless we had a flood, ended at a graveyard near an industrial estate, and cut maybe 20 minutes off our walk back from town. Midway, there's a bridge, and the trees are cut out for the river to go through, letting the lights of the city shine through. On that bridge, you've got basically a weird yellow almost spotlight piercing the dark. You can see it shining a good 10 minutes away due to how straight that bit of path is. A load of us are all walking home after a movie, and we're taking this path because it saves time and, honestly, because we're probably hoping to get a bit frisky with the girls in the birdwatching huts. We're laughing and joking, and the group is kind of spread out, with everyone moving up and down between many groups. We pass over this bridge with no issues except that my mate's shoelace has come undone, and he wants to get it sorted. He's had a bad time recently with a breakup and a job falling through at the last minute and a load of other stuff, and he's kind of on that one more thing is going to break me edge, so I'm not leaving him alone. I hang back with him, and we're chatting away, maybe 20 steps from the bridge with the light behind us, and when he's done, we start to walk back. We've gone maybe 10 steps when there's a yell from the group, and it's not a good one. There's silhouettes in front of us at the moment, barely recognizable as shapes against the darkness, but you can just about see one of them, later revealed to be three of them, pointing at us when the yell hit us. Run. There's a time in horror movies where you hear that, and they just read it. To me, it wasn't a command to follow through. It was a source of confusion. Why run? We weren't that far behind. Unless we had to run from something, what could there be too? The sound that came from behind me cut off all thought. Have you ever seen a dog that's angry and growling but is trying to pull that back? They do that sort of burbling growl? It was that, but from a much larger throat. We turned as one and saw it then, black with the light of that yellow urban moon framing it. It was a dog whose head came up to my chest, I'm six feet, so maybe five feet from ties to snout, seeming to be shaped like a German shepherd but pure black with no defining features that could be seen. It was climbing up the bank from the river underneath the bridge. Most terrifyingly of all, even more so than the horrible noise coming from its mouth, were the eyes shining red through the darkness. I've seen that effect used in video games in the quarter century since this, and that's not what was happening here. There was nothing burning or reflected, hell, the lights were behind it, just the eyes themselves, which seemed to be red and draw attention as the only color visible. We ran then. How could you not? We caught up with our now screaming friends, and we all ran from this gigantic thing from the depths of hell, which none of us believed in. And then we looked back and saw that this creature wasn't following us. It still stood in front of the bridge, seeming like it was convulsing. Its head turned away from us and then back, and the eyes still shone even at that distance, where we felt somewhat safe. It stood then, rising onto its hind legs and standing like a man, and finally let out the thing it had been holding in, a deep and guttural roar that felt like it physically gripped my spine. And it just stood there on its hind legs, seemingly not struggling at all like dogs do, just comfortably standing like a man and letting us know we were lucky this time. We got out through the graveyard almost like a military operation, keeping an eye on all the directions we might be attacked. And then we headed back to town the long way into the police station, telling them what we'd seen. We got a lecture on drugs and were told to duck off before they arrested us for wasting their time. Nobody we spoke to believed it, and so we stopped telling the tale because it just hurt our credibility. I don't know what I saw that night. I know what it looked like and have described it as best I can hear. But what was it? Maybe a dog and its owner were out for a walk, and we saw them at different times? Maybe the owner wore contacts and caught an odd reflection in the same way the eyes of his pet must have? Maybe a train went along the other lines half a mile away in the quiet of the night as that dog barked and it picked up as one noise to us all? We've gone over it so many times and come up with so many explanations for everything that make perfect sense if you think about them. But how many things have to line up perfectly for all that to be true? I don't know what I saw, and I want to believe it was something normal. Our excited minds blew up, but it nags at me to this day, and I never again walked the tracks. I was with a friend at a party. We were sitting outside at a table on the porch as a storm was approaching. Light thunder, a few occasional flashes of lightning, but nothing serious, there were a few others at the table, but we were sitting across from each other engaged in our own conversation about angels for some reason while others chatted amongst themselves. 
she had written her thesis on angels, and we were talking about the phenomenon of how angels or other spirits can make themselves appear in a way that is absolutely certain to the witness but easy to dismiss when you try to recall it. Right as we were on this point, an extremely bright ORB flashed directly in front of the table, which threw both of us off our train of thought. It happened to coincide with a flash of lightning, so when we commented on this bright orb that didn't seem to bother anyone else at the table, everyone dismissed it as yeah, that was a bright flash of lightning, and no, it wasn't, this was directly in front of us, in front of the table, but somehow only my friend and I saw it. We both let it go until an hour or so later, when we returned outside by ourselves for a cigarette. It basically went, you know that wasn't lightning, right? Oh yeah, that was something else. Then we let it go in mutual understanding. On a side note, when I say a bright orb, there is no way in hell this was lightning. It was a shining ball of mass that appeared before us in an instant and disappeared as soon as it came, yet somehow no one else seemed to notice it. Except for the two who were talking about the phenomenon of how angels reveal themselves in ways that can only be understood by the observer. A few years ago now, me and my mom noticed an increase in strange events in our house, doors opening, unexplained sounds, etc., until one night my mom thought I was crying in the hallway, only to find no one was there, despite distinctly hearing female sobbing. Fast forward a month exactly, and I was in the hospital for severe DKA with a new diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. Once I got back home and my health returned to normal, the encounter stopped. We both believed that the crying was from a deceased relative, specifically a grandmother, the details aren't important, but we have reason to associate it with her, who had been warning us, similar to a banshee. I had mostly forgotten about this until a few months ago, when I also thought I had heard a woman crying softly, but I didn't think much of it until my dad had a stroke a few weeks later. Anyway, I was just wondering if anyone had any similar experiences to share or any insight to provide from this experience. When I was around 9 years old, I had a sleepover at my childhood best friend's house. It started out like any normal sleepover. We had pasta, and mind you, she was allergic to butter, so she just ate it plain, this is important, I promise. I always had to wash my hands when I ate something she was allergic to for the sake of her safety. By the time bedtime came around, we went to sleep in her twin-sized bed. This is where SHT gets weird. I had woken up in the middle of the night for no apparent reason, but I had noticed the hallway light was on and the door of my friend's room was cracked. My curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to check out who was still up at this late hour. I peered my head into the hallway and didn't see anyone. I shut the light off and decided to try and get some sleep. I figured someone forgot to shut the light off, so that's why I shut it off myself. I laid in bed for about 10 minutes when I heard footsteps coming up the stairs near the door. Keep in mind that I'm only 9, and I was scared shless. The hallway light turned on, and I noticed a figure standing in the crack of the doorway. The door slowly opened for my friend's mom. Now, this might seem like she was checking on us but she turned her head like a dog in confusion. I had my eyes closed almost all the way to the point where I knew she couldn't tell I was up. My friend all of a sudden rises up, says nothing, and runs to her mom, standing at the door. My friend starts crying, and without saying anything, she points in my direction and begins crying even louder. Then her mother finally spoke in reference to me, did she touch butter, honey? I was so confused, and I couldn't understand why her mother would ask such a dumb question when she saw me wash my hands. I tried my best to pretend I was asleep, but before my friend could respond to her mom's question, she pointed at me once again and said, I know you're awake. I refused to open my eyes and show that I was awake. They eventually left the room, but before my friend's mother left with her, she said in the creepiest voice, almost demonic, I'll be back soon. You better be asleep. I was on the verge of tears. They closed the door and shut off the hallway light. A few minutes pass until I hear knocking on the walls. I covered myself in blankets for comfort and somehow managed to fall asleep. When I woke up the next morning, my friend was sleeping peacefully next to me, as if nothing had occurred that night. I woke her up and asked her what her problem was last night and why she was crying. She looked at me, completely dumbfounded. Her mother and my friend had no recollection of the previous night, but I knew for a fact that what happened was real. This wasn't a nightmare, this was something entirely different. I never slept over again after that. It turns out that a woman who looked identical to my friend's mom died in the house from a house fire. Maybe I had seen that woman, I still have no idea what to make of this situation, but occurrences with the paranormal began after I left that house. The house I grew up in had a lot of strange things that happened for years when I was a kid. So my mom started getting an odd feeling in my bedroom when I was a baby, and when I was a toddler, there were a couple times when she could harm running about and playing upstairs during the night. She'd creep upstairs to try to catch me, 
only to find me fast asleep in bed with no indication that I had gotten up. As I got older, we both heard footsteps going from the downstairs hallway, right next to the lounge, up the stairs and into my parents' bedroom directly above us. The footsteps would go up and down the stairs repeatedly for an hour or so at a time, a few times a week. This even happened when I was the only one home. To get to the hallway, you go through the kitchen, and I would try to see whatever was happening by opening the door to the hallway. Each and every time I tried, the sound stopped as soon as I put my hand on the door knob. I'd try sending the dog upstairs too, but she did not seem to like that idea and wouldn't leave the kitchen. During this time, I would also wake up to find my bedroom furniture had moved, including my bed, and I would have to get my dad to put my furniture back the way it was. I was only about six or so at the time, so I couldn't have done it myself. There was always a cold feeling upstairs, particularly in the hallway in my dad's room, directly above the lounge, and I always felt I wasn't really alone if I was upstairs. Now this bit is going to sound stupid, but I really am not making this up. Once I was a bit older again, about 12-ish, me and both parents were downstairs in the lounge, and the steps had started, this is during the day too, and as I wasn't alone in the house, I decided to be brave and go upstairs and check it out. Sound stopped straight away as normal, but I continued upstairs and went into my dad's room. I saw nothing, heard nothing, and had a very odd feeling, so I turned around to go back downstairs, and on the landing right in front of me was an image of a woman's head and shoulders. She was wearing a tight-fitting black bonnet, almost Amish but with a little bit of white lace, and a pale colored shirt with a front laced up simple corset type thing. Think what farm girls would wear 200 years ago. She didn't move or make any sounds, but she was a pale gray color but as detailed as anything, and she just looked right through me. I ducking panicked at this point. Even though she or it was blocking the entrance to the stairs, I just ran straight through her, screaming down to the lounge again, where my parents were. They still remember that moment, even though it was a long time ago. My dad still lives in the house. So yeah, that's the most scary, weird stuff I have had. When I was in 8th grade, so a few years ago now, a new being became a visitor in my home. My room is L-shaped, and suddenly I started seeing a figure walk from the further part of the L to about the middle, which was right by the edge of my desk and before the foot of my bed. The layout of my room is important to this story, I promise. Now this became a nightly thing for at least 3 months, it would appear by my closet door, walk to the edge of my desk, and stop. Every night, from around midnight to 1am to describe the figure, it was all black. Solid form, you couldn't see through it. It was large, it walked on all fours, but if I had to guess, it would be at least 6 feet tall on hind legs. It had very distinct limbs and features while maintaining a blur of sorts. Its elbows and knees were inverted, it had a decently skinny oval head shape but no face. Its pace was fairly normal, and I never really saw it appear or disappear, it was simply there and gone. At first, it terrified me, of course, but after a few weeks, I adjusted, and it became normal. The thing is, like I said, it came the same time every single night for months after I had gotten into bed. It never mattered if the light was on or off, I couldn't fall asleep before it came, but after it left, I could. My friends assumed I had sleep paralysis, or some even thought I was schizophrenic. I never really tried to move, honestly, and after a while, I wasn't scared either. Now I don't believe it was sleep paralysis because at times I did move when it was present, but that comes later. It came and did its thing in my bedroom. Eventually, I became too scared to sleep in my room, so my parents let me sleep on the couch in their room for a night or two. The way my house is, I could still see my doorway down the hall. Again, I couldn't sleep, and it was late. I'd never seen it go farther than the corner of my desk, now it peeked out from my doorway into the hall to about its shoulders. Again, it stopped there. One of the last times I saw it, it actually showed itself at my middle school. I left class to grab something. The halls had three sets of staircases, and as I walked, it came out of one of the stairwells ahead of me. One night I did some research, and I recited something I found, pretty much saying I wished it would find a place it liked, but it couldn't stay at my home. After that, it was over. I've retold this story many times, and though my brain envisions it and I get chills, it has not returned, and I hope to God that it doesn't. Here's the part I don't quite understand, though. It was there for months, but never once did it actually come closer to me than the foot of my bed. It always appeared as though it was looking for something, almost similar to a dog sniffing the air and looking around, yet it never looked at me. No matter where I saw it, it was near me, but it was kind of like it wanted nothing to do with me personally. Again, never once has it interacted, tried to intimidate, look at, or do anything to me or my family. I think that is why I got so comfortable with it. A friend suggested maybe it was protecting me from something. 
I'd really love to hear ideas on what the figure may have been or what its objective could have been. The tales I'm about to recount are both from my perspective, having occurred around 2004 to 2007 or so. There are two individual experiences that happened in this particular home, one alongside my sister, and then one I experienced perhaps two years later alone. I don't remember the exact age of the home, but it was around 200 years old, built in the 1800s in New Hampshire. It is worth noting that we only lived in that house between the years I referenced. I was about 12 or 13 when the events took place. The first experience took place late at night. My sister and I were outside the front door of her downstairs apartment. We had been packing some of her items into her car and stopped for a quick breather. Suddenly, we heard a sound from inside. She had a lighthouse magnet on the fridge that, when physically pressed, made the sound of a foghorn. Well, we looked at each other dumbfounded as the magnet foghorn played. We waited a minute, and it went off again. It continued to intermittently play, and eventually we were so spooked that we drove to our dad's house late at night. We have had that magnet to this day, and not once has it reproduced this behavior. Two or so years later, I was upstairs in the top floor bedroom of the house, alone in my room at night and laying in bed, very much awake. The only other person was my mother downstairs, asleep in her room. My room had a walk-in closet, and inside the closet was part of the chimney and the door to a crawl space on the roof. The doors to the closet were closed. I was recounting the day when I heard a noise that caught my attention. I figured it was a cat and dismissed it from my mind. Eventually I heard the sound become louder, and in time I started to focus on it. It was at this point that I thought I heard a voice, and as it got louder, it seemed to be coming from the closet. By this point, I believed I was hallucinating, so I sat up in bed to ideally clear my head. I hadn't dozed off but figured maybe I had been falling asleep. I was attempting to rationalize the situation. As I sat up, I heard the voice a moment later, the loudest it had been, uttering the same word I had already whispered a half dozen times before, boo urn, long, drawn out, in a tired hiss emanating from behind the closet doors. I was stunned and scared beyond belief. I heard it one more time and darted out the door to the staircase going downstairs. To this day, I have always believed that house to be haunted. Part of me thinks the noise I heard at night was perhaps an animal that had snuck into the attic, but I will never know for sure. I haven't had any other experiences since. About a year ago, me and a few of my friends were camping at Kingsbury Water Park in Staffordshire, England. I wouldn't say what happened to us was terrifying, or even unexplainable, but still, given that we were alone in a random field and that we have the collective survival skills of a rubber duck, it spooked us to no avail. There were six of us in total, although I don't feel comfortable revealing our names, as I don't want to offend anyone. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary on the day that we arrived. It was about four o'clock in the evening, we had pitched our tents, and we were all having a laugh, mucking about with a couple of Nerf guns that I decided to bring with me. It was late October, and as such, it only took a few hours for the sun to set. As we were inveigled in the cold, autumn darkness, we each decided that it would be a good idea to head into our tents and get some sleep so we could stay vitalized for the days ahead. Of course, being stupid teens, we decided to duck around with each other. After hours of pushing tents over and flashing torches at each other, we all decided that we were too tired to continue and hit the hay. I was the last to re-enter my tent, but on the way in, something odd caught my eye. It was a white, spherical light, protruding from the sky above the trees. The light looked as though it was at the same height as a passenger plane at mid-altitude, but unlike a plane, it wasn't moving in just one direction. The ball seemed to be making rings in the sky. Naturally, I called my pals to get them to look at it, but at this point, everyone was sick of my shit, and they remained in the tents. Shaken, I bit the bullet and re-entered my tent, hoping I could just ignore what I saw and get some sleep. A few hours pass, and everyone else is now asleep. I'm still freaked out by what happened, and I can't stop thinking about it long enough to nod off. Suddenly, I hear some strange gibberish from the right of me. My tent partner, whom I will call Ross, is talking in his sleep. The weird thing is that he sounds as though he's actually structuring sentences out of some strange, non-existent language. Then he leans up and crawls out of his sleeping bag, still spurting nonsense. At this point, I was absolutely horrified. I turned to the other side of the tent, closed my eyes, and prayed that this would end. I then saw the tent zipper, and my eyes shot open again. I got up to see what was happening and found Ross sitting in the middle of our three tents, still chanting his new language. At this point, I say duck it, zip the tent door, and lay down to desperately try and get some sleep. Miraculously, it seems that I did, as the next moment that I opened my eyes, it was light out. Feeling relieved, I sat up to find Ross asleep in the tent next to me. I was a little spooked, 
but I was comforted by the sunlight outside to the point where it didn't affect me as badly. Another day passes, and once again, everything is going smoothly. As night draws in again, Ross strangely decides that he wants to sleep outside under the stars. Everyone is a bit confused by this, but as I didn't tell the others what had happened the previous night, no one was as flabbergasted as me in that moment. Not wanting to be alone in a tent, I opted to share a tent with two of the others. I felt less frightened that night, and we were all able to get to sleep fairly quickly. The night passed, and we all seemed to wake up feeling refreshed. I had even started to feel better about the prior night, blaming what happened on sleep paralysis related hallucinations. That was until we all went out to see Ross. He explained to us that during the night, he saw a deer in a wooded area a short distance away from us. He watched the deer for a while, until it bolted out of nowhere. He said he could then hear a sort of metallic, rustling noise and that he could see the foliage being roughened up and some sort of reflection of light coming from where the deer scampered off. After then telling everyone the occurrences I had experienced the night before, you can imagine that we all universally bricked it. We packed up our tents and stuff, called our parents, and got the duck away from that campsite as soon as we could. We haven't gone camping since. I have a couple stories from my cousin's house. The first one was when I was about 13 years old. I stayed the night at my cousin's house almost every weekend during the school year. We would try to pull all-nighters and fail every time and end up asleep by 3 or 4 am I always slept on the floor with a bunch of blankets and pillows, so I wasn't uncomfortable. One time I woke up before Trey, my cousin, and I checked my phone to see the time, and it was about 8 am, way too early for me considering we went to bed around 3, so I tried going back to bed. I wasn't even close to falling back to sleep, and all of a sudden, I hear the loudest ear ringing gunshot right next to me, and I curl up into the fetal position, covering my ears with my eyes closed, and stay there for about a couple minutes. Then I open my eyes, and there's nothing. Everything seems normal. My cousin's still asleep, and his grandparents, who were downstairs, were also asleep. I stayed up the whole time until everyone woke up and asked if they heard anything, not really expecting them to say they did, and of course no one heard anything or had any explanation as to why I heard that. Nothing was going on outside the house or inside to cause such a loud noise that even resembled a gunshot. This isn't that interesting, but it was weird and unexplainable, and it scared the out of me. The second one I have is almost the same scenario in terms of sleeping on the floor, failing all night, and then waking up before my cousin a few hours earlier. I tried going back to sleep again, and out of nowhere, I feel like a hand tried to pull me through the floor really fast, grabbing my arm that's cradling my head. I instantly sit up and look around, and again, nothing. I know for a fact that it wasn't me falling asleep and jerking awake like sometimes people do, because I've done that quite a bit and know what that feels like. This was definitely not that, and it was in the same room, in the same spot on the ground I sleep on. I have not slept in that room since whenever I stayed there. My cousin hasn't had many experiences like that there, but he said he's heard the floor creaking behind him when he's watching TV and there's no one with him, but he doesn't think much of it, and it doesn't scare him much. So this story happened about 11 years ago. I was a senior in high school at the time, but it is the single most mind-boggling thing that I have ever experienced. Well, me and my best friend were hanging out in my family's walkout basement, just having a boring winter night playing video games. We were also the only ones home. The reason it was just us is because my mother went from work straight to a bar to grab a few drinks with co-workers, so me and my friend thought it would be a good idea to break into the family wine and live a little. As we were sitting there, opening up the first bottle, I heard the door to the garage open and slam shut. I immediately go, OSHT, and start looking for places to hide the bottle. My friend then says, I thought you said your mom was supposed to be out all night? She was, I replied. I then heard a few heavy stomps and heard my mother yell out, Meows and boo? Anyone home? I yell back up the stairs, yup. Just hanging out in the basement. I hear a few more steps move from the garage door towards the stairs, and she yells out again. Can you come help me with something? I need you up here. I reply back while frantically trying to find a good place to hide the wine bottle, yup. Give me just a minute. Then there was silence for about 20 seconds. Anyone down there with you? She yelled back in a more serious tone, in a voice that was slightly off of my mother's. This was the first thing that told me something wasn't right, our family never cared if anyone was over, as our house was a very open house to all family and friends, and the voice was just wrong, like it sounded like my mother's, but it was missing something that I couldn't get my finger on. Weird out, I reply back, just Colton. After I yelled that back to her, I found a good place to hide the bottle and began walking up the steps to the next level. As I was walking up the steps, I couldn't help but feel the overbearing silence of the house and the slight electric twinge that something wasn't right. 
When I got to the top of the steps, I looked over to where the door to the garage is and also to the kitchen right next to it, and it was black, pitch black, all of the lights were off, and there was no moonlight shining through any windows. I walked over to the kitchen, yelling out, Mom! Where are you? There was no reply, just silence and darkness. I feel the electric twinge turn into full needles, and with my adrenaline kicking in full force, I have to get out of here as fast as possible. My mother was not home, I run back down the stairs, grabbing my coat along the way. What's wrong? Colton says, my mom's not home. I reply as fast as I can, looking for my truck keys. What do you mean? You were just talking with her? I could see the confusion in his face. There's no one home, we need to leave now. I took a few steps towards the back door that opens up to the yard, and then I saw my dog shaking on the couch and my cat growling behind it. I couldn't leave them, I just knew that if we left, something would happen. Are we leaving? Colton said, still confused as all hell. No, I can't leave them here alone, something is really off. I'm going to call my mom and figure this out. I pull out my phone and call my mom, and she picks up immediately. Meows and boos? What's going on? She answers. Mom, were you just home? I heard you yelling for me from the second level, and when I went up, you weren't there, I said it frantically, hoping that she was playing a joke. No, I'm just leaving the bar, I wasn't feeling very well. Are you okay? What do you mean you heard me? I fill her in on the whole story, and she rushes home. Colton and I stayed in the basement with the animals until she got home, but before she did, you could hear something up the stairs, not walking or sitting on things, but a pressure in the air, like a black hole was slowly moving from one room to the next, and the word that I would instinctively describe it as is hungry. When she got home, you could feel the thing leave just as quickly as it came, like an overbearing predatory presence had just flown away. We still have never figured out what the hell was going on, and this is just one story of many unexplainable things that have happened to us, but this is the easiest to write down and one that I was happy to have a witness to. My mother has passed away now, and I have moved away to Arizona, but whenever I go back to Iowa and I see Colton, he still gets creeped out by what has happened. I will never truly know what happened, but I know that whatever it was that had my mother's voice, it was evil, and it was hungry. I was about 11 when this happened. My older cousin Daniel, about 13, and I were playing hide and seek outside in my grandmother's yard. She owned a large farm in Tennessee, just over a thousand acres, and I grew up there my entire life, as did Daniel so it was nothing for us to wander off and play in areas that probably weren't very safe for the average kid, but we knew the property like the back of our hands. It just so happened that the day before this happened, a lot of trees were cut down to make room for a new mobile home by the roadside that she intended to rent out for extra income. Daniel and I naturally gravitated toward this new, unfamiliar landscape to play in because it was something new to explore. All of the trees had been stripped of their branches, placed in logging trucks, and hauled off. The branches, however, were all piled in a tangled mess about 50 feet wide and 12 to 15 feet tall. They were packed so densely that you couldn't see through them from one side to the other. It was during the half-hour mark when it was my turn to find Daniel that I began to suspect that he was hiding in the woods deeper than our stated rules allowed. I remember calling his name for several minutes and hearing nothing but a quiet giggle coming from the woods. I was in the newly cut clearing, looking into the woods, and getting more upset by the minute. Finally, I announced as loudly as I could that if he wasn't going to play fairly, then I was going in to get a glass of tea and watch television with grandma. I started back up the hill towards the house. It was at the moment I was walking past the brush pile, basically centered beside it, that I heard an unfamiliar voice say, you gave up quickly. I stopped. I called out, Daniel? It didn't sound like Daniel, but the voice responded. Yes. I am Daniel. I am inside of the limbs. I looked at the brush pile and didn't see anyone. Again, I heard the odd voice call out, if you do not see me, then you have not found me, and I will have won the game. I stepped closer and yelled out to the voice, why are you talking so funny? The voice replied, I am inside all of the limbs. Look inside, and you will see me. Daniel. Something felt really strange about the way this guy was talking, but 11-year-old me just rationalized it, thinking, maybe his voice sounds different behind the shrubbery, and he sounds like he's talking funny because his voice sounds different. I stepped up to the edge of the brush pile and pulled the branches apart to look inside, and. There was Daniel. His head was turned toward the top of the hill, but his body was facing me. I yelled out, I caught you. His head shifted toward me, and he had the single most disgusting smile I've ever seen to this very day. Imagine if someone has the absolute worst of intentions and they're trying to hide behind a fake innocent smile to gain your trust, but they couldn't help their glee with the thought that they may have fooled you. 
That's the best way I can describe the smile. I was so shocked by this wicked facial expression on my cousin's face that I froze in place. The hairs on my neck and arms all rose, and I could suddenly feel my blood running through my body like the temperature had dropped inside my veins. I stammered through my words, how? How did you get in there? He responded, I fell into the inside of the limbs, cousin. I will need you to give me help, or I will continue to be trapped. I didn't notice this time how oddly he phrased his sentences, and it only occurred to me afterward that his lips were not moving when he spoke, he never changed his face from the twisted, unnerving smile. I didn't immediately notice any of these things because I was too distracted by the large stick that was plunged deeply into the side of his neck. I noticed in that moment that he had a slow, steady trickling stream of blood flowing from the half-dollar sized stick in his neck and down across his right shoulder and down his chest. That was enough to jolt my feet awake, and before my brain realized I was trying to run, I was already halfway up the hill to my grandmother's house. When I burst through the door to my grandmother's living room, Daniel was curled up in a ball on the couch and crying hysterically. My grandmother was sitting beside him, trying her best to get him to explain what was wrong, but all he would say was that there was a little boy in the woods who tagged him when he was hiding, and he thought it wasn't really me. He wouldn't say anything else. I was crying and shaken up by this point, and I told my grandmother what I had seen. She made both of us some lunch and then called my uncle to come pick Daniel up. I stayed at my grandmother's house that night, and I bet she asked me what happened a hundred times. She asked so many questions that it was as if she were committing them to memory. I remember being relieved that she believed me, but at the same time, I just wanted her to tell me it was all in my imagination and help me forget about it. The next day, my grandmother set the brush pile on fire, and I watched for hours from the safety of the living room window as it slowly deteriorated into a pile of ash and ember. My cousin never told me what really happened to him that day. He refuses to talk about it. I will say this though, he wouldn't talk to me for a year and a half after that day. We were so close when we were little, but that event, whatever the hell it was, drove a wedge between us that changed our relationship forever. Haunted cabin behind my house? This is a relatively old story that my dad has told me a few times over the years. To begin, I would like to mention that my father is a highly religious man, a preacher's son, and does not believe in ghosts or anything paranormal in the slightest. Nothing seems to spook him either, but he still swears up and down that he felt something unnatural that scared the sh out of him even just from mentioning the story to me on the rare occasion that he would bring it up. Back in the late 80s, he and a few friends would regularly hike over the waterfall-slash-creek bed behind our farm and would follow the trails up until they eventually met the frontage road off of the interstate. Well, one night they decide to take a different route to go around the backside of another farmer's land, mostly to see the animals because they owned emus and other large pets that weren't common in the local area. Supposedly, after leaving the area and continuing into the woods, at night of all wonderful times, they managed to stumble upon what is described by all five men, 20 years later, as a Blair Witch-like house. It was a very old home, and my dad claims that just looking at it gave him this ominous feeling, but of course they had to go inside and check it out. Inside the house was a vintage cottage-style home that was probably built in the late 40s or early 50s, and the group was instantly met with writing and symbols in strange Latin-like languages with a few English graffiti pieces that quoted a supposed satanic or pagan worshipping ritual with certain pieces describing how to sacrifice a human soul to some, supposedly demonic, deity. My father still claims to this day that certain symbols were painted on the walls in blood while others were clearly spray paint, and I find it easier to believe because he also worked as a firefighter for years before this happened and had a lot of experience with having to see human blood and dismembered bodies on the freeway after car accidents. Past a small living-slash-kitchen area was a stairwell that was so small that their shoulders would physically brush either side of the wall as they went up, and the stairs went straight, stopped at a small landing, then turned right, so as you started up, you could not see what might be standing at the top. At the top of the stairs, a door led to a large attic-style bedroom where actual chain manacles and locks hung from one of the walls near a circular window at the end of the room, which was also completely covered in weird symbols, graffiti, and now more obvious and frightening, large dried puddles of blood that had seeped into the floors and walls. Allegedly, once they were upstairs investigating the room, they swear that they heard someone moving up the stairs behind them quickly, but when they looked back, there was no one there. Everyone essentially told me that it sounded almost like heels clacking on wood, and, now completely spooked, they rushed back down the stairs to see if someone was playing a prank on them and was hiding downstairs. Surprise surprise, they found nothing and no new footprints in the dust and grime that differed from the ones they left on their way in. To keep things interesting, I met with each of the guys separately to ask them about what they remembered, expecting to maybe find a crack or something to prove that maybe they were exaggerating, but when I asked them, 
I got the same answer from each of them with no hesitation. They got the same details right down to the minute that they entered the house and the minute they left, but here's where it gets really strange. They left the house and, for some unknown reason, decided to try walking back from a different route, using a compass to approach from the east instead of the south. They did this test more than 10 times that night, walking from every possible route or direction, yet they always came out at the front entrance of the house, even when the compass and common knowledge of the area showed that it was physically impossible to be at the south end of the house when they moved in a straight line from the north, east, or west. There probably is some scientific explanation for it, but I haven't found one yet. These guys knew those woods literally like the back of their hands and still do to this day. The final time that the guys came back and found themselves standing at the front door of the house, they began to feel physically ill, verging on feverish, and finally decided that it was time to give up when one of them nearly fainted. As they turned to leave, the man who nearly fainted turned, looked up, and pointed at the circular window at the front of the house on the second story. Everyone looks and immediately sees a tall female figure hunched over standing in the window watching them, though they see no features on her face other than two large, dark colored eyes, and it sort of shuffled in place slightly before turning and walking away as if it were heading to the stairs at the end of the room. At the sight of the figure actually moving, they all took off running through the woods, ending up on the side of the interstate, about three miles from my dad's house, where they originally started from. They eventually made it back to my dad's place, though they claimed that they felt as if someone were following them the entire way, and my dad's cousin got up to get some water from the kitchen only to announce that he swore that he saw the same figure standing outside of the kitchen window near the edge of the woods, close to the woodshed. Thankfully, nothing ever came from the experience other than a collective state of absolute terror when the subject was brought up. They wrote off what his cousin saw as paranoia or pareidolia, though five years later they decided to return to see if the house was still standing. Miraculously, it had fallen in on itself and was nothing more than a pile of rubble, and they never went back. I always joke with my dad and would ask him what he would do if he went back and found the house standing the same way it had back then, trying to give him a reason to let me go and see the place for myself, but with trespassing laws being far more prevalent in today's times, it would be nearly impossible without either getting shot or going to jail as it was not on our property. I don't know. It always gives me the creeps thinking about it but I never considered the story to be true until I did this little mock interview with all of the guys. And when I say that these grown men are scared to death by this story, I mean it. Seeing them get physically worked up and frightened by just telling the story really caused me to be less of a skeptic. What do you guys think? Could it be possible that they were just spooked and it caused them to see things? I'm kind of hesitant to share this story because I know people will not believe or judge, but I don't blame them. When I was 17 years old, I hit a huge bump in my life, causing me to lose myself and what little innocence I had left. I lost faith in myself and in life. Then, on February 23, 2019, I came home from high school extremely tired from all the school work. After getting off the bus, I immediately went straight to bed for a nap. I woke up to someone pushing me, trying to wake me up with urgency. I opened my eyes and saw a little girl with black hair crying and telling me to get up, get up, he is coming. I responded, who is coming, who? She said, he is coming, you need to go now. Right there, I heard something fall from the kitchen. She immediately stopped crying and looked at me wide-eyed, and she said, he is here. I got up, and she was hiding behind me for some reason. I was not afraid, only concerned. So I saw the door knob start jiggling, like someone was trying to turn it. Then the door flew open, and I saw nothing but darkness. Before I could even question the darkness, a probably seven foot or taller creature stepped into my room, bent over due to it being too tall and the roof being too low. It sounded almost like a clicker from The Last of Us combined with a police siren. It had pointed teeth and a long, sharp tongue, but the eyes were just two yellow, glowing dots in the middle of the eye sockets. It was just pitch black, and it was dripping some sort of black liquid-like oil, but it smelled terrible. It smelled worse than a decaying animal, and I had no idea how to explain it. I stayed there, the little girl gripping my hand, and she started crying again. Then, from behind me, I saw a pure white light start to shine. Before I could turn, I felt a hand lay on my shoulder. I did see the hand, it was the hand of an elderly man, and he said with an echoing voice, this is not your fight, son, it is mine alone. I then woke up, jumping out of bed and struggling to breathe. I never got out of bed or my room until my family came home hours later. I am 20 years old now, and I still can't get over the trauma to this day.